Alright, hello everybody. Welcome to the second edition of the Redact Cast. Today we have this guy right here, Hank SG. Fantastic man. And uh, we're going to learn a lot from him today. Uh, would you like to tell us who you are and what you do? So who I am, I'm still searching who I am as of today. But uh, as of right now, I am pursuing a, uh, I'm pursuing my, educa my higher education, hopefully one day, in psychology. Because what I would like to do is I would like to create VR simulated environments to help people that suffer from kind of uh, like strong, uh, I guess you could call them irrational, but phobias and stuff like that. So using VR as a type of exposure therapy to help people with that kind of stuff. Oh, that's so, fantastic. Yeah, I, it's it's crazy, dude. It's crazy. I love it. So yeah, I, I, honestly, I've you. just learned that I have a major phobia that I had no oh. idea that I had. Really? And Dark Souls taught me that uh, for some reason I'm terrified of the frogs with the giant eyes. Really? I I can't. Like anytime they show up on screen, I like I, I actually panic. And I get my friend who I'm co-oping with to kill them for me because I literally just can't. Did you know those frogs, those giant eyes are actually They're not eyes. eyes. I, I know. know. And it made it out. so much worse. I know. I um <laughs> I like I was like, I think I was just starting like Sekiro. I just finished, I think I just finished Bloodborne. Mm. And my buddy sends me that picture of that same frog. And he's all like, hey, do you know that like his eyes are actually down below? What are you talking about? I'm like, what the hell? I've been looking at this entire time. So, it's so yeah, terrible. I, I, I can kind of see that, man. Um, I mean, good luck with the frogs, but uh, no, I know I, we found a giant one. I was like, I'm fucking out. Like, nope, nope. Later, co-op buddy. You got this. Yeah, I'll literally, tail, man. it got me because like, it, it, people make fun of me all the time because they're like, everything else in Dark Souls doesn't freak me out. Like any other creature in the game, I can handle whatever. The fucking hand things, it jump scare the first time, but after that, I was like, whatever. The frogs, I cannot. <laughs> Through two Dark Souls games, I just can't. Every time I get my ball, I'm just sniping from a distance. I'm like, I'm not getting like, anywhere nope. near you. You're like, nope. Yeah, That's it's funny, dude. That's ridiculous. Funny. Are there so, frogs in Dark Souls 3? I have been told that they don't leave, so I'm assuming that they are also in there. Uh, well, good luck then. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, continue what you were saying about yourself. Uh, my bad. Oh, yes. I cut you off. So, no, you're good, man. You're good. Um, so... I've been doing that. Uh, I actually recently started Twitch streaming mm -hmm. about the middle of last year because of COVID. It was one yep. of those things where uh, I think Doom Eternal was coming out. And so oh, I was okay. like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll I'll stream this because this is cool. I love Doom. I've been a hardcore Doom fan since like forever. And uh, I did that. And then I stopped for a little bit. And then I just randomly started streaming Apex in mm -hmm. like uh, what June. And then all of a sudden I just hit affiliate in like July. And I was like, oh, I guess I'll just start doing this. And so I just been streaming then. Yeah. And it's actually been going really well. I love my community. I'm like, I, uh, I have a community full of trolls. <laughs> I've uh, I've conditioned them in mm. indirectly, I should say, uh, yeah. to just mess with me. And I, I love it. So um, they like, so I, I have like chat commands and stuff like that, like videos that you could play during my stream that mm. uh that, that'll pop up on my screen and so like if i ever die in dark souls they'll have like like a picture of nelson pop up and start laughing at me or like <laughs> the, the guys dancing with the coffin that, that old me uh -huh. just like walk across my screen and it's just like i don't know they love it i love it it's 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 really cool so it's really chill. Mm. so yeah so you do a lot of uh apex and stuff now i i do i don't normally stream apex as much because apex is a very kind of those competitive games are really hard to break through on Twitch oh, because yeah. there's like just that ceiling of people really good. That's literally what uh, I was gonna ask you about. I was like, that's <laughs> I've tried getting into like Warzone and stuff. And I'm like, no one ever shows up because there's yeah. a million a better Warzone players out there. Uh, it, essentially, so it's actually funny. Um, and I remember the date. It wasn't until August 23rd of last year that my buddy was like, dude, just stream Dark Souls just for fun. And I was all like, all right, whatever. He actually gifted it to me. So I played the remastered version yep. and like the first stream like I did was like 30 people. And I was like, I just went from like seven to 30. Like, OK, yeah. I guess I guess I'm doing Dark Souls. And so breaking out of the Apex shell, like I still play a lot of Apex off stream and sometimes mm. on stream when it's like I don't feel like doing like like a Souls game because like it does take a lot out of you. Um, oh, yeah. I'll do I'll do Apex here and there, but um, I, I, I love Apex. It's really fun. I love. Uh, I don't want to say outsmarting people, but I love so there's a character named Mirage that likes to throw clones and decoys out. Yep. I, I guess like for like Naruto does. Yeah. And uh, I love that stuff. 
I love annoying enemies because it uh, you could feel that frustration because like it's oh, that yeah. point where like let's say they empty an entire entire magazine into like an empty clone and they're like they see the real me in front of them and they're like oh well I'm screwed and then, then boom I just I don't I feed off that so it's fun. <laughs> feed off that energy. I feel you yeah <laughs> I I've, I've tried to like dabble in apex but like I think like where I got my joy was I played a lot of um I can't remember his name but the robot uh Pathfinder yeah, I just I really enjoyed the the zipline mechanics and like being able to like swing around and get like the inertia and everything. So I got like really into that. I got pretty good with that. But my aim's always been like mediocre. Like I'm not I'm not the worst, but I'm not I've seen you play Apex. I'm not at that level at all. <laughs> I can't hit my shots consistently. Oh dude, that's an illusion. I wish that was that good too. Um <laughs> I'm so bad at Apex. <laughs> Uh, so this is going to be kind of weird to, to hear, but, uh, so back in the day, I used to play Halo 2 back in the day on Xbox Live, like, OG yeah. days, like, hey, uh, <laughs> I'll stay up all night playing Halo 2. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't always good at aiming, so something that what I tried to do was I tried to master strafing back and forth and using my actual character's position to hit yeah. my targets. Yeah. So, and it's funny because that's carried over into Apex, even after all these years and uh, I rarely kind of like aim down sights when I'm doing like really close one new ones mm. because it's like I want to keep the momentum and if I can keep you the center of my screen and although my bullets fly I can still keep that momentum and I can I don't have to worry so much on focusing on aiming where I just worry about moving and trying to at least generally throw as much bullets at you until like you die so yeah, yeah. No, it, it, I mean if it works it works man but like I've tried so hard to just get back like i've done like aim trainers i've done like all that stuff and just like my aim isn't bad i have like when uh because we've been recently playing valor with a few of my friends oh nice um uh like we uh it's three people who've never played valorant before and then me and my friend who've played like i've played a little bit of valorant back way back in beta and he played a little up to like a few months ago he stopped yeah, yeah. and we're so it's basically just a team of people who are all coming back to it and none of us are very good to say mm -hmm. and like uh, there, there are those days where like I'm hitting my shots consistently. I remember to stop moving, which is like the crucial part of Valorant yeah. and like all that stuff. And then there are days where I'm just like, I just can't hit the broad side of a bard. And it's it's like I can't find the consistency in it. And so it's just God, I can't. I hate shooters, but I love shooters. It's, it's a terrible, terrible cycle that I'm Dude, stuck with it. Have you ever played Counter-Strike 1.6? Because I was no. god awful at 1.6. Oh, man. Back in the days of like, there's only like what six polygons on the screen. Uh, mm -hmm. I was just so bad at Counter Strike. Uh, I was never good at it. So I actually did recently start Valorant about that was last month actually. I just downloaded it on the whim and I was playing mm -hmm. with some of my streamer buddies and my own good buddies. And uh, I, I'm I'm horrible at those games too. I'm just like, if I get one kill, I'm gonna like, yeah, dude, what's up, man, what's up? But <laughs> it's like I don't know. It's like one kill and like 16 deaths. So. Yeah, no, this is when you just don't look at the deaths. There's, that death number doesn't exist <laughs> if you're playing a game that you're just getting back into. It's like showing your mom your report card. Like, don't look at the S, mom. Just look at the C I got. Like, you I'm, just, I'm doing good. You slide the report card covering up half of the report card. You're like, look, mom, I got an A in social studies. You put, like, a $5 bill on top of it. Like, you didn't see anything. Yeah. Staple it to the paper just so it doesn't pretty, move. Pretty much, man. Pretty much. So. <laughs> But, I uh, mean, at the end of yeah. the games, the games are just like searching that kind of they're searching that high. Like, you know, you want to feel good at the end of the day. So however you can make yourself feel good, if it's ignoring your deaths or, you know, just playing with buddies, it's all that matters. So actually, I, so um, earlier I was mentioning how I, I gave that I yeah, talked yeah, yeah. class about reward. I actually talked about that and it was that um, that pursuit of the reward. So when you're when you're playing a game like, OK, I just want to get a kill, you get that big fat hit of dopamine and it gives mm -hmm. you that like that promise of hey if you kill someone or you actually win the game you're gonna feel really good even though it might not feel that good but it's yeah. like that pursuit is what gets you going that drive is what's powerful man it it, it makes you do uh <laughs> it makes you do crazy things so all right i feel like that's also like the stem of like uh what gamer law where it's like you know you can't end on a win because like you can get another win it's just it just this might be like the tipping point or and you can't end on a lose because what if you win the next game kind of thing i don't know i don't know about you man but you ever do that thing like all right dude one more game one more game, <laughs> one more game. and it's like it's like four in the morning and you got like work at like nine and so yeah yep. yep. i've been there it's just like no, no no we can just do one more we just won we're gonna win again yeah, yeah we just keep the, i'm on a hot streak man 
Yeah, exactly. Then you lose. You're like, okay, we can't end on a loss. Like, come on. Like, what? What if like, you're like, you can't go to bed knowing we're bad. Yeah, come on. Your mom would be disappointed in you. Let's not do this. So, it's, yeah. oh God, I feel like that's just a terrible way to do things. But it's just, it's so consistent between gamers. If someone could find a way to break that cycle, I'm all ears because I'm stuck <laughs> in that loop too, man. Starting with YouTube videos. Yeah, one more video. I'm out, then I'll then I'll go to bed. I'll officially go to bed. So. YouTube's worse though, because YouTube like, look, I know you're going down this rabbit hole. So here's 20 more videos to go down. <laughs> Want to watch the entire King of the Hill? Like best. I know. On me, dude. Oh, so. dude. I, I mean, and also with YouTube, like you, uh, all the recommended videos, like you'll scroll through the recommended and be like, oh, I want to watch this video, this video, this video. And you'll click on one and you'll be like, I want to watch this video, this video, this video. And it's just, uh, then eventually you finish your line. You finish that one line. And you're like, all right, cool. I don't feel like any of these recommended. Go back a video. You're like, oh yeah, I want to watch these two. And it's just like the tree that is YouTube is the, the worst. <laughs> It is. Do you ever like reflect back and you're like, dude, I just spent like two hours just watching YouTube videos. I could have like cleaned out the garage and s instead of doing that. Like if you just like reflect back on that and you're just like, hmm. There have been times yeah, I've I just left YouTube on and played like Minecraft. It's the oh, worst nice. combination. It's the worst oh, combination. Nice. Cause then you'll like look back and you'll be like, oh shit, it's been 10 hours. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. That's crazy. Oh man. But, so uh, uh yeah. oh good oh no, i was gonna say yeah that's yeah <laughs> so uh yeah so uh, the topic of the podcast was video game startups and like kind of like that experience so tell me uh because i know you started or try to start a game company how did that all go and like what was well, actually, the, the process yeah. so so yeah so originally just to recap so my buddy comes up to me and he goes hey you've done a couple of these startup things you um one of the last projects you worked on got up to St steam green light why don't you try it with me? Why don't you try it with me? And uh, you'll spearhead it and I'll do a lot of the backbone stuff and then we'll just get the ball rolling, right? And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. So as earlier, neither one of us could really program. So that was that was kind of a pain. So we had to find someone yep. to help us program. And then uh, the art that him and I both produced, we were more like 3D artists. And so our 2D okay. drawing was like abysmal. And so it was just like, well, how are we gonna do this? All right, uh, hey, uh, I'm not going to say his name, but I love that guy. Hey, do you want to do art for us? And he's all like, yeah, I guess. What I get out of it? It's like, you want you want to become a business partner? <laughs> it's so like, oh, yeah, man. We, we totally did that just to um, to get him on the on the, on the the ball with us. And he actually produced wonderful, cool art. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, cool art. So the game the game that I'm talking about uh, that we released was called Cake Thief. And I don't know if you can find it on the App Store. I, I left that company years ago. But um, essentially, you play. I don't know if it's very appropriate nowadays, but essentially, you play it as this giant, like, thick boy. I guess, like, an obese guy, I guess you'd call him now, but I don't know if it's appropriate. But uh, you play this thick guy that uh, had his birthday cake, and this crazy homeless guy steals your birthday cake. And the whole premise is that you had to chase this guy down to get your birthday cake back. <laughs> so it was an infinite runner. Uh -huh. And we had all these really cool, crazy ideas. So like if you collected all these little cupcake things, you eventually you turned to like the Super Saiyan like big dude that would fly across the air. You, you know, you had a oh it was it was fun. It was it yeah. was those those were the days. But yeah, so so we had an art, we had programming, we had a, on and off a lot of different um, people that would help us out. So like, uh, I remember I remember a friend of a friend knew a guy that was like a musician from New York that I ended up like contracting him to make music for that and sound effects. So I made that, um, that was, was all right. Usually I don't think sound guys really know how to do like fully like sound effects because it's something kind of like completely different. So. Yeah. But it was, it was one of those things where it's like, well, you just want to find sound effects and yeah, uh, yeah you just wanted to have it like professionally done. So it was mm -hmm. one of those things like, okay, screw it. But it was difficult because like at the time I was like a full-time student at, um, at school and I was trying to work three jobs to pay for everything because it was really just, it was really difficult. And uh, once we kind of got like a prototype going, then we had to like doing like, okay, how are we going to do the business stuff? And it's like okay well now we need like a business license now we need yeah. um now we need an actual website now we need actual like we need now to have an, uh, a a uh, i forgot how it was. it was like a what it was like a business account with google and pay for the publishing license fee mm -hmm. and all this stuff and so i remember like while doing that um i was 
networking with the city that I was that I got my license in. And they had like a startup, like an entrepreneur startup kind of thing. And we uh, I was I was going there hoping that maybe I could learn something. Right. Because I was like a, essentially I always called myself. I was a kid off the streets. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was yeah. just there. And I was just trying to figure out what was, you know, what's the next move or who to talk to. Mm-hmm. I've always been a very, uh, like an extrovert person. I've been always been very mellow and I can almost talk to anybody mm-hmm. um, for the most part. Um, so I would put myself in these really random, awkward situations just to talk to people, just to network. And I remember like um, I met up with these, uh, you know, like this, 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 this group of uh, investors at, mm-hmm. um, at this the city function and i became like a regular with their town meetings and stuff like that and it was uh unfortunately it didn't really go anywhere because a lot of it was just kind of like i don't know if you see like those stereotypical like business movies where like they just all like this big talk like oh we're gonna make a lot of money we're gonna do all this 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 we're just gonna you know we're just gonna do it right and it's just like it, it, it's the thing is it's not just movie talk that's how like uh, too many people have that mindset Oh, yeah. And that's why it's movie talk. It's because, like, if you go to like anyone with an idea, they're like, no, 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 this will make millions of dollars. It'll make so much money. We just need to, you know, we just need to find these X, Y, and Zs. And, like, X, Y, and Z obviously never comes together. It, that's it's, precisely what it is. Is Yeah. No, I, I feel you on that. You have people that talk about, like, so in, in regards to this, you had these people that were talking about, like, computers, but they didn't know how to use, com- well, I, I can't say that, but it was like, you can tell, like, that level of, like, um, like, like, like a, like efficiency at using computers like you can know yeah. when someone's trying to fake it with the lingo it's just like oh yeah man i have this awesome mouse and you're like okay or the person who's like, taken oh, like dude. one class versus the person who's taken like literally studied for 20 years right and you're just all like you can kind of tell with like you know their their, their, their yeah. mannerisms either their body languages and stuff like that that mm-hmm. how how comfortable they are talking about it so i was in that kind of environment and uh, i was just, i was just trying to talk to whoever i could just to kind of get me through the ball with that and a lot of them that were there were more software developers they weren't so much because it was tech they were software yeah. developers but they weren't really like game developers they weren't yeah. really familiar with that and even yeah. though game development is software development in, in its own right completely different bits. beast i've done both yeah. completely yeah. different beast precisely because like once you start hitting art and theory and it's just like okay now it's it's different now so mm-hmm. but um yeah so that was push that didn't go anywhere and um that didn't end, that didn't, that didn't say it ended on to like a, like on a good note, but they kind of just like disappeared because like it, it seems like the people there weren't able to pull in enough interest that were promising like the city that we're going to do all these really cool things. And so it yeah. kind of just died, which was unfortunate, but you know, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. So back to the story with the company, I was like, okay, well that didn't go anywhere. That was kind of like a waste of time. We're still working on this pipeline. We're still doing this. We're doing this, and we're doing like everything wrong. Like we had like a general game design document. We had like weak prototypes, and we weren't really focusing on like how to monetize it. We were just thinking like, okay, let's just build it. Let's just build it, and we'll just throw everything in there last second, yep. which was very foolish of us because we should have taken into consideration how we were going to make money off it, and then build it while we were thinking that. Yeah, kind of like just... build around it instead of after the fact, shoehorning it in. Precisely. Like you can't just like expect just to put a bunch of frosty on a cake and expect the cake to be good and like the yeah. cake is what's, the frost is going to save you it's like no that's not that's not how that works man you yeah gotta, you have to balance things out so that was that was a big mistake but mm. um but yeah so and we also we were using the <laughs> we were using game maker as our engine instead of like using like unity or unreal well unreal mm. i don't think at that time unreal supported mobile development but i don't even know if they still they probably do now um but we weren't using Unity. We were using Game Maker, which was using uh, <laughs> uh, the Game Maker language, which is, I think, just like a version of like C++. Mm, and it's so, okay. if I'm not mistaken, it's like so janky. Like you don't even need semicolons. <laughs> it oh, was God. just like, yeah. It was oh, just, God. Yeah, it, was, it was one of those things, man. So, God, that hurts. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, but sure enough, so like, okay, so we end up doing getting our business license. We paid our fees, we pay our dues, we did all that. It's like, okay, so now how how do we like make ourselves like how do we advertise ourselves? Like, how do we mm-hmm. get ourselves out there? And so this is 2014 again, 13, 14. And so this is when back in the day the internet wasn't new, but in comparison to 2021, oh my god, uh, it's uh people were still like networking like through twitter and all this kind of stuff so i mean we still do it now but it was 
people were companies and business were still like trying to get their footholds in it mm. so there was like these um i would find these things on twitter and whatnot like these little groups that's like hey um join our community and we'll help promote you which in some aspects it did like it helped us advertise like the company name because the name of the company was miss green studios and so it would go like okay so you know you're in with this in crowd and this is like what like indie bd or something like that mm. and so that helped us get traffic people were checking out the website um we actually started our own podcast there was only two podcasts that we did and it was um they, <laughs> they were pretty cringy to say so the least but we were we were trying all these things and just to like get traffic flowing mm -hmm. and um it was it was rough it was rough because uh if you again if you don't have a plan if you don't know what you're doing and if the product's not good you're just kind of uh <laughs> you're taking yourself a grave but yeah. um it was cool though because i learned a lot of like how to network how to do things so like i would in 2014 no the game wasn't released till 2015 i'm sorry it was 2015 when the game was really oh dude I'm, I, I know it's it's i can't remember anymore it's like a just a blur but <laughs> it's all good 2000 no it, it was released in 2015 mm -hmm. and so what happened was in 2014 when i went to gdc um you know i would have a prototype of my 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 my, my game and i would I'd be showing different people and whatnot and it was actually really cool because i started getting like offers of um publishers and so okay. that was actually pretty chill because yeah the thing is that like in gdc on the on the ground floor i should say because gdc is like a bunch of different businesses going at the same time mm. is that there people are trying to they're trying to secure their dream they're trying to promote what they want to build but the problem is that a lot of these people not a lot but these people don't really have a prototype or a working prototype or all these kind of things they're saying oh i want to do this i want to do that i want to do this and it's mm -hmm. a guy that has money is not going to go like well i don't want to invest money into a dream that i can't see that's not yeah. a reality and so um it was actually cool because i was starting to learn i was learning these things you know while i'm still getting my product ready that's like hey this is how this is this is the art this is this this is this and they were like oh this is pretty cool you know this is all this and i remember i was showcasing it to the game maker guys i don't know if game maker's still around and they loved it so much that they were like we want to port this we want to we want to endorse you we actually want to port this onto it was a console it wasn't on live it was some some kind of box i forgot what it was it was it's not stadia either it was uh -huh. years before that but they were like yeah we want to it was the oh yeah oh yeah that's what it was um was that what it's called i have no idea no oh so there is this little game console it's like oh, a yeah. box oh yeah that's what it was yeah that's oh my gosh um we were like yeah this is a pro oh that's great hey you want to put them though yeah and i'm all like yeah all right let's let's do it and he was like yeah this is yeah this is great yeah yeah yeah. we want to do this just yeah we'll fully help you out and whatnot but uh, i never heard back from that guy and uh, <laughs> I, I think that's when game maker wasn't doing too well but um so yeah, we I, I learned how to network. I learned how to network from just promoting ourselves and stuff like that, and uh, faking faking it to get into like some big wig GDC parties and stuff like that. Becoming friends with bouncers just to get inside <laughs> these these things. Oh, dude, I just oh, it's it's just it's just how it is. Um, <laughs> Look, as someone who's been a security guard, if you are nice to us, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Honestly, <laughs> that's, that's what I've learned. And the sad thing is that like people don't treat you guys with respect. It's no, sad, no, not at all. I, I it, it sucks because like I was a security guard for a, a mall mm. one of the key roles was like look if someone's here after 2 a.m. you got to kick them out and, and it always hurt because you'd have like you no know, people who were like homeless who were always just like there yeah. trying to just find a place to sleep for the night also my camera just froze fantastic hold up there we go I just have people like trying to sleep for the night on like a bench or something and like yeah. there were so many people that I'd be like hey you gotta go and they're like I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm just like you know I just tried to find a place to sleep I'm, I'm really sorry I'll go I'll go I'm, like it got to a point where I was just like you know what just stay I didn't see you and I would just, just walk the other way general direction over here and you're cool yeah yeah and like my boss never said anything to it because they're not gonna check the cameras for like a four hour period to see if I told someone to leave a bench. I'm just like, I'm yeah. not going to be a dude. Like my job is, I don't want to be a douche. My yeah. job is to walk around here. If something's broken, call the police. And my pants out again. Fantastic. <laughs> all good. Um, but like all that stuff just together, it's, it, it kind of just, 
it, it shows that security guards are trying to just to be people. At the end of the day, it's a oh, job absolutely. that we're just trying to get done. We don't want confrontation. We don't want to fight. They, obviously, you have your security guards who obviously like they want to throw someone out of the place. This, that's like their that's their rush. Most yeah, of us, that's, it's that's, an easy job to get into. Really easy. It's it was sad because like I remember I I mean I've I've seen balancers and whatnot, security guards, um, you know, here and there, but like I knew that I wanted to get into like these environments like like the Microsoft party and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. you know, you have these balancers that would wear these suits and like they have to put up that that rough exterior to know like no no kind of nonsense kind of thing. And you could see, like, for me, and, and uh, I know it sounds a little weird, but, like, for me, I, like, you could see that. Like, you could see, like, this person is, they're focused on trying to do the job and, like, everything that they deal with, either people, like, saying, like, oh, like, screw you, man, like, just let me in. You could see, like, they have to let that bounce off them. And they're still people, regardless, you know, they're still individuals. And uh, I, I, I guess you could say it was, like, a level of manipulation, um, but it was one of those things where it was all like, hey, man, I'm here to see... Uh, I don't remember the name, like Steve or something like that. Yeah. Uh, it, actually, this one was at E3, actually. Yeah, it was at E3. And um, I'm here to see Steve. Xbox people, I forget. It's the Xbox party on top of a roof. It was an awesome party. I love that party. But uh, he's all like, oh, your name's on the list. And I'm all like, um, yeah, Steve, glasses, bald hair, all that kind of stuff. And he's all like, um, oh, no, it was Chris. That's right, it was Chris. He goes, nah, I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to email him. Is it cool if I chill here, man? And he goes like, yeah, it's fine. I'm like, oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. And I go, what, rough night? He goes like, yeah, man, people are dicks. Oh, dude, I understand, dude. Well, I'll tell you what, as soon as uh, as soon as Chris gets here, how about I bring you back a beer or something? He goes, oh, dude, I can't do that. And I'm like, hey, man, listen, I, I know you're trying to do your job. You're, tr- you know, <laughs> you're sitting here. I don't, I understand it, man. Like, you're a person first. Like, I, I get, I get it. But like, mm-hmm. this is what you got to do. And he's all like just go up there dude i'm like are you sure do you want to bring what, what's your what's your fancy and he's all like oh just no nah, I, I can't i can't drink on the job but just thank you and yeah. so it was like like with things like that like those kind of tricks from networking of just like being decent to people that would like uh help me expose like expose like you know yeah. show ourselves to the industry and yeah i have i have, <laughs> I have plenty of stories from that stuff so but uh fast forward we finally we finally get ready it was gdc 2015 might have been 16 i don't freaking know anymore dude um i know i keep pushing back the years but like no, that's not good i went to see like 14 15 16 17 and i only remember the difference of the years is by the people i went with and mm-hmm. i went with people multiple times so it's kind of like was that 14 or 15 so um yeah uh so eventually it's we're getting ready to fast forward we're getting ready to launch the game and we uh we did all our twitter promotions we paid all our licenses and fees mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff and um we wanted to release the game before gdc because you you want to be able to comfortably say i have a i've released i perf- i've i published i developed and i released a game and that opens so many doors and opportunities for you yeah. and uh <laughs> I finished I, I forgot what happened I finished everything I I think like because GDC opens up on the ground floor on a Tuesday Okay. we were leaving Monday we're driving from Southern California all the way to San Francisco and then anyone that's done that drive knows it sucks it's horrible long have you done it? no but I've, I've actually wait no I've done it once it was it's actually garbage it's, it's, it's not, not even on, dude. it's a long drive and it feels longer oh yeah it, it was just not fun so i remember uh i remember i stayed up like i think like a whole day making sure i had everything finished everything was polished all the icons and all that stuff was like mm-hmm. set right yeah and so <laughs> we get we're like, okay, so this is what we're gonna do, guys. We're gonna try to save as much money as possible. We're gonna drive all the way to Oakland and we're going to take the BART. Because if you've ever been inside actual downtown San Francisco, it is a mm. mess. I'm one of the few people, I don't know if there's as few or not, but that hates driving in that city. It is horrendous and it just, it's not fun. So yeah. we thought the smart thing to do was to drive outside parks outside the city take a train so they call it the bart yeah bart into the city and then just like walk like 
three miles to our hotel and so we're like okay i have i have all the i have everything set i uploaded the apk file to google i did all that everything is set to go and we're all like in the car we're like oh we did it we did it you know it took us like a year like to do it but finally did it and so like we're we drive up to oakland and we're all excited and uh <laughs> We advertise that there's a BART there. We get there and there's a security guard that waves us down. And he goes like, what are you guys doing here? And we're all like, oh, we're here to take the BART. And he goes like, yo, this train is not even under, this train's under construction still. It's not gonna be ready for like like two years. And we're like, why the hell would you have it on the website? <laughs> I was like, oh, dude, I'm just, I'm just a security guard, guys. I don't know yeah. any of that crap. And I'm yeah. like, what, what is this nonsense? So, so, and I'm like, oh, this sucks, blah, blah. I wanted to go up, to, I want to hang out because the nightlife of San Francisco is actually pretty cool. Um, yeah. And I, I love I love going out to, uh, you know, like like pubs and, and sometimes clubs and whatnot. Just, just I love that stuff. It's fun. So uh, sure enough, we see the APK. We see the APK on. Um, we see the APK on, uh, on, on, the, on the store. And we're like, why aren't the icons showing up? Oh, no. <laughs> it was like it was like standard stock like game engine icons like so if you ever like i don't know do like a test build or poured out like a like a simple build of unity it has like the unity logo and it says like just the file name yeah it was just like the logo and it's like you can't have like like the engine logo for your icon like what is this nonsense so like we finally get into san francisco and my my one of my best friends jeremy i love that guy he's he's mm. one of my best friends i uh he already had his he already had his uh his hotel and jeremy did like the complete opposite of everything that we did he was like i'm just gonna fly there i'm just gonna take a cab i'm gonna just chill i'm not gonna deal with this eight hour drive Yo, <laughs> that's the way to do it i know i know dude one of our one of our <laughs> buddies that were with us with, was with us he's like i'm gonna save so much money i'm he bought he went to Costco. He bought like a 30 pack of top ramen. Oh and so my he, God. He carried it with him throughout the city because it's all like, you know, I, instead of paying the ridiculous convention food prices, I'm just going to go back three miles to the hotel, eat some top ramen, head back. And I'm like, dude, you're going to do that once. And you're going to say, no, yeah. you're going to pay those $20 for a bottle of water. You're gonna Literally. Say no. That's exactly what happened. But, um, oh my God, that sucked. So, uh, my buddy Jeremy was already at his hotel. He had all his stuff set up. He's just chilling. He's just vibing. And I was like, dude, um, I need to use your laptop. And he goes like, what's wrong? And I go like, for whatever reason, it's not like accepting my, it's not accepting our, 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 our icons for, for the game. And he goes mm -hmm. like, uh, it's like, oh, I mean, I guess you can use my laptop. And so like <laughs> we, <laughs> three hours after that phone call, cause it took us that long to get into the city. We get in there, we find out where you know, he's staying. I get on his laptop and I'm like, I need the new APK or not the, I need the new icon files to upload it because for whatever reason it didn't want to, uh, it didn't want to read it right. And so like at the time I was living with my grandma. And so I was all like, Hey, can, um, can you, can you email me these photos? And my, my poor grandma doesn't know how to use a computer. So it's like, I'm trying to like explain to her how to turn mm -hmm. on a computer, yeah. how to use a mouse, yeah. how to open up a file how to a t oh my god all while like i'm on this freaking laptop trying to upload like the oh my goodness long story short we eventually got it going it, it was up there and it felt good but it was incredibly frustrating because like everything could go wrong went wrong that day like the bart was closed yeah i got no sleep we drove up there um uh i think i was actually went to the wrong hotel because my buddy had a uh, marriott he had a Marriott rewards card thing, like a timeshare. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. like, there's so many Marriott's in downtown San Francisco. So like, um, cause I think, yeah, he went to the other Marriott. I went to my buddy Jeremy's hotel to, uh, upload the file. And so like, after I got done doing that, it's like, okay, I'm just going to go to the hotel. I'm going to clean up. And, uh, <laughs> sure enough, I went to the other Marriott that was like three miles that way instead of that way. And yeah. he's like, dude, I'm looking for you. I'm at, I'm on the third floor. It's like, dude, this Marriott only has like, doesn't have a third floor and it's, it's just <laughs> but yeah so that was it was that was a uh it was a very painful mm -hmm. painful experience with, with with doing that but uh officially did it and um it was interesting because i remember like uh after you release that first game after you release that first platform you do have a title under your belt and even if it's not successful 
yeah. you still have the competency of actually like sticking with it. Mm. And so I've learned that through that people where uh, do doors and opportunities do open from that. Cause yeah. like, Oh, who was it? Who was I talking to? Oh, I was in E3 2016, I think. And I was talking to telltales telltales the guys that did like the walking yeah. dead and all yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff they just started a like uh i mean I, I, I think i can say it now but they just started a secret publishing section for the company because they were making so much money off the walking dead and the wolf among us and i remember i was talking to them and the first things they always asked was like do you guys have any experience you guys even released a game and i was like yeah and i'm like oh really oh, okay so he like personally takes me from like the floor room all the way to his secret like business section which was this huge place had like free beer and all a bunch of other stuff i was like oh dude i'm loving this and just yeah. cigars and stuff like that and so like like those opportunities do open and he's all like so it's like uh, he's like sat down with us and he's all like yeah so um yeah so he, what do you guys got so it's like oh this is our next game it's called uh it was a it was a game where you're a cat in prison and uh i forgot what the name was called but uh, essentially, it was like a, you're a cat and you're running and you'd be chased by guard dogs because the cats, mm. the dogs rolled up the, the, the prison. And then you would rotate the phone and the cat would run up walls and stuff like that. I see. So, yeah, and it was uh, it was cool. I showed him that and he asked about our experience. We told him about it. And he was like, oh, OK, yeah, great. That Yeah, absolutely. So as soon as you're done for your next build, um, send it to us and then we can start talking money. And so, uh, yeah. Once you once you cross that once you finish and release your first game, it does uh it does open doors. So mm -hmm. yeah. I I I I tried to realize that real early because like I I still haven't put out a game. I mm -hmm. we um I worked with the team in college to make a game. We developed it as much as we could because it was a course, so it was like sixteen weeks. We developed it as yeah. much as we could in the sixteen weeks. Um, it got picked up by um the uh, Anthony Studio um and they were like hey let's make it go further kind of thing and it just it didn't pan out which happens with games obviously um but at the same time anthony was working on um his game fetch force and he was oh, okay. like he was like hey you know i just he asked the the class he goes hey does anyone want to like help play test you know i'm like yeah sure and so i took the play testing very seriously i was like i played through each level multiple times i recorded my best times i recorded like i had a spreadsheet of every level what time i got what i felt was broken what needed to be improved and gave it to him just so he can make changes easier could um and then because of that he actually put me on the uh, credits of the game as um a uh, product like assessment kind of thing and I was like, that name right there already says so much because if I show someone like, oh yeah, no, you know, when I, if I try to get a play testing job, which I haven't searched for because I've heard they're garbage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like, if I ever do and they're like, have you ever play tested? Yeah, my name's right here on an app on the app store as like, I helped play test this game. It, it like that just small thing helps. I've read. That's pretty cool though. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Good, no, good for you, man. Oh yeah, no, I, I just like, and Anthony's super nice dude. I'm so glad like he even gave me the opportunity to you know do it because oh, he could have been like, yeah, no, he's fantastic. But he could have definitely been like, you know, thanks for the help, peace. And just, Here's your A. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. No, uh, he, I, he has he has a heart of gold. Yeah, he's fantastic. And it's one of the reasons I like still try to chat with him. Which same reason I was like, hey, come on my podcast. I want to talk with you specifically. It's just like, he's just a good guy. Next, next time you talk to him. Ask him a game about ask him about a game called Strike, and he's gonna hate me for that because I brought that up. Or if you're watching this, Anthony, talk about Strike. All so, right. I, I, I don't. I won't say much about it because he hates it, and I want well, him to talk about it. But it's uh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly write game. this down. Uh, strike no. the board game. <laughs> strike the board game. Gotcha. <laughs> It's on the notes now. We'll bring him back one of these days, and so we'll talk about it. Oh, he's gonna go. He's he's gonna say, "God damn it!" Like I, <laughs> it's gonna be great. I love it. Um, but yeah, dude, that's super. That is super cool, though, man. That is super cool. So, are you are you still trying to pursue doing games as well, or? I would like to. I just don't like. I don't have the drive right now. I could tell. I've tried in the past to like start my own game because I I've have had game ideas well the one that i really wanted to pursue and focus on it was an endless runner like you were talking about and the premise of the game was basically uh set in the future basically you have your runner and the the gimmick of the game was instead of it just being like you know scroll left and right 
um the the main character would have like these gravity boots that you would rotate your phone and then he would like stick to the wall or like flip That's your phone upside cool. down and it stick to like a sky bridge just adding the the extra depth to it i like I, that that's pretty cool yeah I, I always wanted to develop it it just i know that i don't have the time or the dedication right now to learn what to do and implement it because i have a basic understanding of coding um i've taken c plus plus java all that stuff i took uh about a year of game programming to understand like that whole like fundamental so i have fundamentals down and if i look up code i can understand it and implement it but it's that process of spending eight hours trying to figure out one thing to then implement it and then it breaks 17 times i just i like the drive's not there right now yeah so i just i keep it in the backlog if i ever really want to commit or i have time to commit i will do it but I'm not gonna. I, I'm not telling people like, "Hey, yeah, I'm gonna make this game. I'm gonna make this game." You know, it's like a, I'm gonna be really realistic. I know right now if I start it, it's gonna die. I'm never gonna touch it again. Mm -hmm. I'd rather. You, oh, how would how how would you pace yourself though? Like, how would you, like, if you were to let's say start now? I know you don't have to like say you have the motivation for it, but like now that you have like the wisdom of knowing how you work and mm -hmm. your, your your method, how would you pace yourself now in comparison into the past? I feel like my main thing would be putting together and like a team I know myself could help me before starting. Mm -hmm. Cause if I start alone, it's going to die within a week. I don't, I, I can't put myself in a, a solo position and finish something start to finish, especially like a game. I need a team mm -hmm. to work with, to bounce ideas off of, to know that my direction is good and also to support me when I can't do something. Yeah. And so I would definitely find people that I know, you know, can do basic art, who can do um, someone at least to assist me with programming, because doing it all myself really sucks. Mm -hmm. And also just someone that like could be there and will give me actual opinions, because I have too many people in my life who are very much like, oh, yeah, it's a great idea. Just do it. Like, yes, man. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, that's not what I want, nor that's not what's, <laughs> what's going to get this done. <laughs> exactly. I love it yeah. when someone goes, look, this is great. This idea is stupid though, and I'm like, but that's my favorite idea, and they're like, yeah, it's stupid. Get rid of it. Okay, all right, let's let's figure yeah. this out. That's that's I, I just the, I I feel like I need a better um support team before I even try to attempt it, and then if that happens, I feel like just the pacing would be trying to get you know prototype done within I'd say like three months. If we can get a prototype working, does like we don't need visuals, we don't need it. We just need a stick dude running down a hallway, and we can turn the phone, and he sticks to a wall. Just that vertical slice, man. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just showing potential, and then you can skin it. Then you can add, you know, enemies and all this stuff. Um, I already have like I've written out a plan for, um, you know, uh, trying to like make money off of it. How do I want to? How do I want to give players a way to like, you know, support it? Buying power ups, all this stuff, and just 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 that whole thing just needs to be developed now <laughs> can i can i ask you a question yeah so with that in re with that in mind everything you just told me which is just beautiful by the way how would you reward yourself doing all that like how would you reward yourself like i, I how would you treat yourself to staying committed and doing all that and having people with you and find it and putting all the effort and energy like how are you going to reflect back of your effort so you could physically mm -hmm. see that because I think, um, from my experience, at least, um, just going at it, just, just running straight, it's going to cause a massive burnout. And oh, the, yeah. burnout is, the burnout is actually what kind of caused me to get out of dev for, like, the longest time. Mm -hmm. um, like, I didn't touch, like, an engine from, like, 2016 to, like, 2019 or 20. Like, it was just, I was just done. I was done. Um, but how, but, but now with my knowledge, everything I do now... How would you personally like, re like reflect and reward yourself for staying committed? Because, you know, you gotta, yeah. <laughs> you, you do have to show appreciation towards yourself that way. Because if not, you yeah. can potential burn yourself out. So, uh, how are you? How would you do that? So far, the way I've discovered is like best for me. Uh, and I learned this because I, I didn't realize how much like I get a kick out of it until I developed the game with the team for class. We took a night every like couple weeks to play the game. We just, no work would be done. We all sit down, you know, grab a couple drinks and we'd play the game for hours. Yeah. And just that rush of like, holy shit, I made this as well as like, it could go here as well as this is just fun to hang out and play. 
fantastic. So taking time, I feel, just to like kind of enjoy what you've done is important. And that that's the rush for me is like, even when I was doing like coding for software engineering, when I like write a program to, you know, assist like a spreadsheet or something and I put in all the numbers and I see the numbers come back, I'm like, holy shit, that's amazing. Let me fix all these things now. And it drives think, me to continue. Do you think that might be something similar in regards of like sticking with the gym plan and working out and seeing the results of your body? hundred like, percent. You, you think it's similar to that? Okay, cool. Yeah. No, uh, I, cause I, I would say so too, but yeah. yeah I was, this, I, cause I, I used to, I worked out for two years consistently. I started out because it's, um, I was in a really dark place. My friend goes, Hey, join me at the gym. It, it's a gym is a great therapy basically. And I was like, is. I was just like, I was like, sure, whatever. Fine. I'll join you. Cause he had like a week free at like 24 hour fitness. And I was like, fine, I'll come with you. I went that one week. I was like every day I would go home and knock out. Cause I was just so exhausted from working out. And I was like, I haven't slept in like four months. So it was yeah. like a relief. And so I kept going. And then eventually, obviously, like I, I got out of my dark place. I felt a lot better about myself and about my environment. Got that serotonin going, man. Exactly. Serotonin kicks ass. So. <laughs> and yeah. so after that point, I was kind of just like, all right, let me just keep doing it. Because there was like, it wasn't the mental thing that I was trying to get over now. And I, now it was like, oh shit, my arms, they look good. Oh shit! I, <laughs> Damn, I, I'm looking good. <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. I like I picked up groceries one time and I was like, "Oh, I can lift all of these. I can make one You're trip. Like, I can make one trip, mom. I swear." Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And like those things, like that's that's the that was the lift for it. And then COVID happened, and I was like, "All right, I'm not going shopping anymore." So like a lot of the stuff that I would see myself to want to continue working out, I just didn't see anymore. And almost immediately I dropped working out and I got canceled my gym subscription, all that stuff. And I'm like, I need to get back to this now. And I, God, I hate it. I'm actually, I'm actually going to turn our, I talked to me, my, my roommates, um, I'm actually going to turn our gym into a garage, or, but it turns <laughs> our garage into a gym. I'm getting rid of all the gym equipment. We're parking cars there now. As we're putting cars in here. I'm going to work in it. I'm going to drink beer and it's going to be fun. So, um, yeah, so I am actually in the process of cleaning out that garage mm -hmm. it's just filled with stuff and uh i gym equipment's not too expensive i mean it, it, it like good stuff is but like you yeah. just get like a bench for like a hundred because i yeah, used exactly. to do a lot of i used to do a lot of free weights um and just do a lot of strength training that way so i'm just saying like screw it just free weights uh a bench and like maybe maybe some like full-on barbells and then yeah just be enough just to get it going so mm -hmm. would you ever do that i mean I, uh, cause my dad, uh, he's a big gym dude. And so he used to, he used to have like benches and stuff, like multiple oh, nice. benches and like, you know, different sets of stuff and like has weights all kind, like across the spectrum. And there was a point where I was just like, Hey, let me just, let me just steal your free weights. Like ones that he doesn't use anymore. So I stole his like 10 pound barbells that cause he uses like forties, fifties now is whatever. So I stole the tens. And so I have those in my room and every once in a while I'll find myself just like looking at him and being like, yeah, let me just knock out a couple reps of something. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on top of that, like I made stream redeems for like doing pushups and made stream redeems for doing sit-ups. I nice, made stream redeems, just nice. stuff like that because a, I know people like to torture me cause they think like working out sucks. So make him work out. And in my head, I'm like, it does suck, but I'm not mad at it. Two stories with that. Uh, so like, <laughs> I, I've been, well, I've been wanting to do that as well to put mm -hmm. like working out on stream, but, uh, before I do that, I still have to clean out like my my stream area to do that. But um, I actually had dabs like people could redeem dabs for okay. one dab for like five hundred points, right? Yeah. One day while playing Dark Souls two, I I was getting to the rotten right, and so uh, I had I think I just got raided by like thirty people, right, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Anthony was actually there. Him and all my friends have been lurking for like a month or so now just redeemed all the dab points at that point and i was joking i was like come on bring it on people just come on bring it on bring it on because i think we just got up to like 100 dabs right and i was like screw it every bid or like donate or uh, gift sub or whatever i'll i'll add like another like 20 right because like what's 20 dabs for like a like a sub that's not that's not too bad mm -hmm. so essentially that tally got up to four thousand. jesus christ um yeah and so like i had to do like a thousand dabs straight and i counted like i had my clock it took me 38 minutes to do a thousand dabs 
and it sucked. It was yeah. horrendous. And I don't ever recommend. I mean, it's pretty funny to watch, but uh, like it, I had like Carmel dancing and stuff like that on, and so like it just do a thousand dabs on stream it was just like painful yeah <laughs> like around like 800 dabs like my arms were like literally like, like i had like little t-rex arms like they, they were just like nah dude we're we're, we're done so uh, just was, so uh, you know ranoxic says uh you still owe them like 5,000 dabs oh my god <laughs> i love i love i love him he's uh he is one of my best friends i uh he likes to get me into trouble <laughs> I, I i see him as like an older brother in a way hmm. so i think he was responsible for some of those dabs too so yeah Dude, I oh, yes. remember uh, for stream, uh, I made a I made a sub goal or like a channel point redeem, like a channel point goal, like the overarching goals where it's like hundred thousand points or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, look, if we hit a hundred thousand points in a month, I'll do the Russian push up challenge. What was that? So the Russian push up challenge is very very fun, and I do need to do it again because it was a lot of it was a lot of fun, but it's rough. Basically, it's a it's a interval push up training. Mm-hmm. And so day one, you do your maximum amount. However many push-ups you can do in one set, you can like, obviously like if you need to like extend your arms, just take a sec to knock yeah. out five more, so feel free. And just get them until you can't get up again. Once you do that, you do like 30% of your maximum every hour for the rest of the day. Oh my God. It gets worse. Whoa. It gets okay. so much worse. Hold up. Let me, let me, I'm going to pull up the numbers just so I can give you like specific numbers. Cause I made so an Excel sheet. This is why we the Cold War. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. But, uh, I, I basically ended up making a spreadsheet cause, um, like I said, I'm a, I'm a computer science nerd. So spreadsheets are like my best friend. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Day one, after you do your max, 30 pushups every hour. After that yeah. day two, 50% every hour. Then 60% every 45 minutes, 25% every hour. Next day is one of the first rough days. It's 45% of your day one max every half hour. And it's just like these intervals throughout the next two weeks. The worst day, week two, day two, because uh, at the start of week two, you do a new maximum. Yeah. And obviously it's gonna be higher than your first maximum. Week two, day two. 55% of your week two maximum every 20 minutes. Oh my God. And you did all this? Yeah, I did all this. So basically in two weeks, I did a total of 1600 pushups. That's pretty cool, man. Oh, Good it was fantastic. And it's like so fun to talk about, but my God, was it painful. And like, it, it's real weird because like, if I had to go to the store and I didn't time it correctly and my timer went off, I had to drop down in the store and knock out X amount of pushups. Did you seriously do that? That is, that is awesome. So like you'd be in the produce section. It's like, Oh, just gotta, yep. I was just like, all right, I got right 15 now. real quick. Just one, two, three, four. And like, obviously in your public, you're like, I want to knock them out quicker. <laughs> oh, that's, and, that's actually pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, I, I attempted like a, a pseudo version of it when I was still security guarding. So there was times like, cause I was an overnight security guard, I'd be doing my rounds and then just like, I'd have to knock out 20 pushups real quick. <laughs> and I recommend it to people because like, it's also fantastic to not use just for pushups. Like if you're not a push up push person, like you don't want to get better at pushups, but like, you're like, I really want to get better at sit-ups. I really want to be able to do pull-ups. Yeah, yeah. The, the process of it works really well with anything. And it, it, it was really interesting. I was like, you can even apply it to like studying, like taking, you know, every 15 minutes, do this many study questions. Yeah. Huh. And because uh, it makes it, it first makes it feel less tedious. Like obviously like the 15, 20 minute days, you're like, man, I feel like I'm doing this nonstop. But that's only one or two days. The hour long days, you're kind of like, oh, it's been an hour. Yeah, let me just knock out something real quick. And it's not a big deal. And it, it's it's like, I don't know, the psychology behind it is just really interesting, which is why I, I even developed um, a third and fourth week for it. Like using charts and everything, like to see like what's more optimal. And so I built my own third, uh, third and fourth week for the Russian push-up challenge. And I'm like, if anyone ever wants to take the full month, let me know. I will send you the Excel sheet. You can, you know, make your own copy of it, put in your own numbers. It will send, like, it'll, it'll just calculate everything for you. Huh. That's pretty so cool. I got like three people to try it out and all of them were like, yeah, this was fantastic. I hate these days because they sucked, but they're like, it's just, it was fun. You know, I'll try it. 
All right, I'll send it to you. I'll, I got I'll you. Try it. I'll try it. <laughs> Dude, I haven't done a. Okay, so like, I haven't done a push up since like. Oh my god, maybe it's been a year. Uh, <laughs> so when we used to, uh, me and my buddy, my buddy Jeremy, I mentioned earlier, I love that guy. And my other buddy Crimson Arrow, my two mods. When Apex first came out, and then literally a year after it came out, we used to do this thing called Fitpex. Mm -hmm. And so, like, every time we'd play, like, eight Apex games, we'd have a tally of 20 push-ups. And then every time, like, something you would do positive would take away a push-up, but every time okay. you did something negative would multiply what you had. So if you hot-dropped and then you died within, like, a, like 30 seconds, that's, like, 20 push-ups. If you died and didn't do any damage, that's, like, plus five push-ups. So depending on how long those game sessions were, and when we were first doing it, like, we would die, like... Every like two minutes so it's like okay 20 20 25 25 25 and it it was encouraging us to get good at the game get better at the game but at the same time we were also like getting stronger from it because we were just doing it all the time and like yeah it was, i've always wanted to go back to fit pecs but it's one of those things like man do i really want to just, like just stop but uh no yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. you know i'll try it i'm, I'll I'm telling you right now game. though it gets real awkward because while i was doing the push-up challenge i did a 24-hour stream and so what I ended up doing was I basically how I did mine and how I um, how I set up the, the Excel sheet is basically you pick what time you want to start and what time you want to stop every day. You want to be realistic with yourself. Okay. I think I said, like I told people, you want to aim for like um, about 10 hours at least a day that okay. you're willing to put in. So I did mine from 1 p.m. every day because I was like, I don't typically wake up before 1 just because of how I was streaming and not working and everything, I didn't need to wake up before one. However, yeah. I did mine from uh, one till midnight every day. Oof. Because I was always up until midnight, you know, minimum. And I like I, I was being realistic with myself. I was like, that's 11 hours where I know I will be awake and I will do this the entire time. So thankfully during 24s, you know, midnight to 1 p.m. or 1 a uh, 1 p.m. I was I didn't have to do any. But stopping stream every 30 minutes to be like, hold up, guys, I need to knock out my push ups real quick. <laughs> people were super interested. Like they like they would laugh. Some people like if I miss time, they'd be like, hey, it's time. You forgot to set your timer. And I'm like, shit, you're right. All right, let me knock him out. That, that's a really good idea, actually. Yeah, so it's I, fantastic. I have class on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Like, I have six classes. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, I'm... That's going to be interesting. Just in the middle of, like, a presentation. It's like, all right, hold on, guys. Just... <laughs> <laughs> so no. I, the amygdala is responsible for negative emotions. So, like, yeah, just... <laughs> no, it also, like, I feel... Because, like, it, I noticed it was streamed. I'm sure, like, it would apply to you. When you end up doing that stuff during times where you're like obviously like exposed to other people a lot of people are interested in watching for those moments because they're like oh shit okay he's about to do some push-ups let me let me let me make sure i stay awake or whatever like stay you on the what? stream you're absolutely right though because i think back and i reflect on like dabbing that hmm. people would like just lurk just to dab for dab points like people like i'm not like really like too familiar with they would just lurk and they would just do it yeah. just just rig yeah that's actually interesting yeah it, i it, actually it's yeah. a lot and like for you obviously like because first like you know people have like that just like insight to like enjoy suffering that's not like actual like death and so if you're like you know you knock out your push-ups and you're like man my arms hurt people are like haha that's funny <laughs> but like it, it i don't know just like the, the the whole like dynamic behind it and um at the time i was streaming like four times a week so four times a week you would see me cut I would have I, I had to make a separate tab for push-ups specifically like a separate scene for push-ups I had my camera already set up so nice. I was just doing push-ups so often I was just like let me click do push-ups click back and it was it was it's a lot I'm gonna tell you right now it's a lot and it's gonna like there are some days that if you do it you're, you're gonna be like I don't want to do this anymore <laughs> I'm gonna be 100% straight up with you there are I'm days that you're now. just like I'm done I quit <laughs> But like, I don't it, want to do it now, but like, that's, I mean, that's sort of my life. Here, I'll do it, dude. Just, just, just yeah. any up, I'll do it. But, um, um and also, yeah. one thing I should tell you, because obviously we're human, we're gonna miss times. If I ever missed a time, you make up for the next one. Okay. So, like, if, like, um, say, like, I, it was every hour, and 30 minutes after the hour, I was like, oh shit, I do my push ups. I would knock them out right then. I'd do them, and then I'd only have a 30 minute break. That's on me. That's my fault for messing up. Mm -hmm. 
if I missed it the entire hour and I had to do 10, I'd be like, oh shit, well, I'm gonna just do 20 and catch up kind of thing. Like you, it, it's a lot of self-reliance and making sure you're, uh, you're caught up yourself. And then on top of that, one of the things that uh, I really enjoyed was that you need to be realistic with completing them. Okay. Cause like you said, you you may be a person. Cause I was also this. I said this uh, uh, seven months after COVID and after working at that time. So um, I I just I, I couldn't do as many push-ups as I used to when I was working out. And so what I would have to do is some days I'd be like, I can't do push-ups. My body will not let me do push-ups. So I'd like have to drop my knees and do push-ups on my knees. If I couldn't do them yeah. on my knees, I'd drop to my hips. I did push-ups on my hips. Like you, as long as you get to the number realistically, then you're good. It's kind of reminds me of the gym where a lot of people would say, as long as you finish and have good form, that's all that matters. Don't worry 100%. about the weight. Just, just exactly. worry about completing it. Just do it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I know I don't want, this is gonna be great. I don't want to do this. I don't, this could be great though. <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop it in your streams over the next two weeks and be like, hey, oh, man. where's your challenge? Yeah, hey, uh, what, what what time is it, buddy? What time is it? So, yeah. Uh, but like, you know, it's 100 percent. Um, working out, it's 100 percent. Like, it's a mental game. Like, you have to like you see all these people doing all these crazy things, and you're like, man, I really wish I could like lift all that weight, but you can't. So don't. Yeah, don't, they don't it. yeah, don't break yourself to reach that because then you're never gonna reach it. Same with this challenge. Like if you know you can't do these push-ups, do not strain your arms to do like a normal push-up when you can drop to your knees, you know, and do the uh the the alternate version of a push-up. Because it's still working your arms, it's just working them slightly less. Right. And you're still building that muscle because you're getting it done and you're not hurting yourself because you're not overexerting. And that's like when I when I was when I was going to the gym consistently that was something i had to learn a lot of uh and my friend who at the time he was just training to become a physical trainer now he's actually working for a gym as a physical trainer well he oh. was until covid oh. Good for him, but yeah. <laughs> yeah um but like at the time we um he would he would give me my workouts every day so every day we worked out he would give me like okay this is what we're doing today we're gonna work on arms we're doing these things that you know whatever and some days he'd be like, all right, today you're going to do like squats with like 60 pounds. And I'm like, all right, yeah, I would give it a shot. I would like go down. I'd go, I can't do a squat with 60 pounds. He goes, you did that one fine. I go, yeah, I'm telling you right now, I can't do nine more. And he goes, no, 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 you can do it. I'm like, no, I really can't. And so we'd switch to like, you know, 40 pounds. I'd do a couple more. And he'd be like, all right, cool. You knocked him out. Good job. Then he would do it with 60 pounds and go, oh, shit, I realized my mistake. I'm so sorry. <laughs> And um, and so like over time we kind of got this development of like if I I could I would always go into a workout, going I can knock this out. I've been told to do this. I will finish the set. And if I didn't and I went, my body can't. He would listen. Mm -hmm. And that's that's definitely how you have to look at working out. Is just you have to know where your limits are, but you can't give yourself more limits than what you need. Is if that makes sense. Yeah. Like yeah, basically yeah. like you can't like. It, it, obviously knocking out 30 push-ups is hard can you do it depends on you but if you can get those 30 push-ups no matter how hard it is right but you know if, if you can do 30 push-ups it's excruciating but you can get to 30 but you stop at 20 because you're like 20 is where my limit is that's not doing you a favor that's well, that's I doing it easy i think at that point you're just kind of cheating yourself exactly you're, kinda, you're you're allowing yourself to um <laughs> You're allowing yourself to uh, take a more comfortable route, you know, the path of least resistance. And you mm -hmm. kind of like confirm that lie. And I think unfortunately, yeah. if you keep doing that for so long, you kind of you kind of develop that mentality of like, well, this is where I'm at. And you kind of kind of uh, bottleneck your own potential. So literally like, like you, you know, when your body screams, he's like, dude, do not do this anymore. You're done. And it's like, OK, maybe I'll stop. But uh, or no, maybe I, I will stop. Not maybe I will. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can't cut yourself short like that. So, no. Like, uh, when I started the challenge, I remember a lot of people were like watching, and they would see me do my push-ups. And like, uh, my first, my first day where I was like, I'm gonna set my maximum for this day. I went and I stopped at like 14, and like I was on the floor for like a couple seconds. And it was like, Are you okay? Okay, just stop, just stop, just stop. I go, No, 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 no. I can do one more. And I try to do one more. I got one more. And they're like, Are you good now? I'm like, No, 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 no. I think I got one more. I got one more. They're like, You're gonna stop now? I'm like, No, 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 I got one more. I went down. My arms wouldn't go back up. I was like, This is when you're done. This is when you're done, guys. This isn't me saying I'm done. This is my body saying you can't come back up. Mom. <laughs>
<laughs> and so I had to like roll over and like sit back up because I couldn't lift myself back up with my arms. And I'm like, that, that's the difference between quitting early and quitting when your body says you need to quit. Something actually kind of came to mind real quick when, when you just said that. And it's like, do you feel guilty when you quit? And if you don't, do you feel proud of yourself at that point? And then it's like, then you know that you've made the right choice. But if you don't, I think at that point, that type of guilt that you'll feel from like cheating yourself could play like a like a like a type of like mechanism for you to go like nah i should stick with it see that's the uh, thing that's exactly the thing because like when i started working out that was my mindset of like everything i did i was like i could have done one more i could have done one more and yeah. then now when i'm like working out and i i collapse like that obviously safely be safe yeah. if you're lifting weights obviously don't put way too much weight on your bar because then you break things and that's terrible uh but like that that idea of just like i could have done one more i don't like that feeling Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make sure I couldn't do one more and that's yeah. that's kind of how you have to it, like it applies to a lot of life like you know that assignment could I have put in one more hour of studying would I have been happier with one more hour of studying would I have been happier if I you know if I did those homework problems instead of skipping them or if I time my plan I, or I plan my time more accordingly oh absolutely. absolutely exactly and then like uh just recently with streams i was like i'm gonna switch to full-time streaming i'm gonna do eight hour days four days a week i did it for two weeks i was like my body can't handle this i'm bringing it back rough. to six hours yeah it's so 100 yeah. so i brought it down to six hours a day four days a week and that way i could spend more time on youtube and stuff because i wanted to develop youtube videos as well so i basically had no day off and now i'm like this is a lot more comfortable and also, I feel happier doing it. But you have to try to set that higher bar and see if you can even reach it before you lower things. That was one of the things I learned the hard way was that. Um, so I did a lot of bad things streaming. Uh, not nothing like bad, like illegal. It was like dumb things that you learned from like, don't do that again. Yeah. And one of them was that like, if I streamed very long sessions, it'll help me get more exposure kind of thing. And like mm -hmm. this is like when I kind of like first started out as an affiliate. It was that uh, if I keep going for like seven, eight, nine hours, I will help attract more of a wider audience. And it was yep. one of those things where it's all like, dude, I can't be doing that to myself. Like, like I'll, I'll get out of class, I'll do like a full day of class, and then like I'll just go like stream for nine exactly. hours, and then it's like I'll get like five or six hours of sleep, and then start again the next day. And it's like, dude, you can't be doing that. It's it's you not do it for it's yeah, it's just it's not even like it's just not healthy. It's like you just run out of stuff to talk about, and you're not entertaining anymore. Oh yeah, it's like uh, pushing rope. It's what I, it's one of the phrases I've been using lately. If you're just not efficient and not productive, you're just pushing rope at that point. Just like yeah. stop. So no, that uh, that six hours thing, dude. Because I in, in in regards to Dark Souls, like Dark Souls for whatever reason just fries my brain, dude. I am just done. Um, because I I think it's like the whole like you're learning all the patterns, you're adjusting, you're adapting, you're you're, you're making those connections between things, and mm -hmm. then you're communicating with chat, and then you're reading, which. I mean that that, that is a joke as in reading takes up energy but as in like you're just doing so many things that you don't realize if you don't eat or do any of that kind of stuff like that and then five hours goes by and you're like oh my god i'm exhausted but yeah yeah it's 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 streaming has been uh streaming is really cool it's very uh you learn a lot about yourself and people through streaming that you didn't oh, realize yeah. oh yeah absolutely <laughs> i actually um one of my one of my uh one of my really old good friends um she's thinking about streaming right just as like mm. just to try it out and i was trying to tell her like there's a lot of things you gotta gotta know but you gotta take it seriously in regards of well i mean you can stream for fun like that's not a problem yeah but you can't just assume that just because you stream you're going to get an audience or you're going to develop this like you have there's a lot of things you need to do into consideration like number one thing is you have to learn to respect your viewers like you have to treat mm. them nicely you have to treat them like you know fair and don't just think of them as cash grabs don't think of them just as numbers like no think of them as as people that um you would like invite them over to your home like you want to be good to them mm -hmm. and that was one of the things i was telling her about it and as i was going on this long speed of like showing her how like how stream labs works and how like this works and how this works and she's like dude you just like switched like i thought you were on the radio like you were just talking and i didn't realize it at the time but i switched to my my uh my stream persona and it was really <laughs> crazy i didn't realize i did it um Yesterday, when I when I when I was given that lecture, I actually did my stream persona, and it was very cringy because I'm in this professional setting talking about, you know, uh, talking about like the the dark side of dopamine, and I'm all like, 
And uh, yeah, it's a, it makes you do really crazy things. And uh, yeah, what's up, chat? <laughs> I didn't really say chat part, but it was just one of those things. I was like, I was catching myself going back to, and I was like, I can't, because you know mm. when you have like your camera going, your mic going, and you're just like, you just you you're just talking. You yeah. kind of switch. And so I was even reading like the, the the chat messages on this on my other monitor, and I was just like, it just it was just a really weird habit just to transition into. It was like it was a kind of funny at the time. Yeah. It was funny. It was awkward, but it was. Yeah, of course. Cool, so, uh, I have like one quick question for you. Uh, Winston asks, "Do you have a pro uh, portfolio? Uh, portfolio of or like your what? games and stuff, or the stuff you've worked on?" I do on a website that hasn't been updated in like five years. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, I mean, yes. I don't. I, I I still pay for the damn domain name. Actually, oh I got my the god! Today, but I don't. I, I I I just don't touch it. But uh, yeah. I do. I do. It's just um, it's like stuff like you would find from a college student. Nothing. There's anything bad with that. But like yeah. it's all my old college stuff and the stuff that I'm doing now is like completely different. And I was even thinking about showcasing the stuff that I'm doing, but on stream. But it's not to a point yet where I'm satisfied to show it. And you know how that ordeal. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, this is cool, but it's like it doesn't look pretty. And if someone doesn't understand the dynamics of it, they're gonna go like, yeah, well, where's the colors? Where's the pictures? And it's like, okay, so not the disrespect stream or anything like that, but it's, yeah. So no, I I agree. It, like it, it's funny because um, like you were saying, you want to treat chat and when you're streaming, you want to treat chat like basically like they're friends that you want to hang out with. Less of this is people who I want to try to get money off of. Um, but at the same time, everything you do in stream, if you want to make it like even remotely successful, also has a consideration of like, all right, but what do I have to do to make sure people come in and stay in? Yes, absolutely. And like, so you have to look at what you're doing as a way to earn money, but the people who are coming in to give you that money, not as money themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's a really weird balance, especially when trying to explain it to people. Because you're like, yeah, no, but like, you know, all these people there, my friends come in, uh, you know, they, they donate, they like subscribe, all this stuff. And people are like, oh, how long have you known them? I'm like, just since I've started streaming. And they're like, that's weird. Why are these people giving you money? And like, because the atmosphere I'm putting out is just to hang out and they're helping me support an atmosphere. To have more people hang out with us and working us oh good uh you ever working a service job before i've worked fast food for like two weeks and then quit because i hate people uh, and then I, ca I came here <laughs> and i love you people. <laughs> <laughs> um but what so as you as you were saying it kind of reminds me back of my time as a pizza driver and pff, god i i have stories for that but um i i guess i kind of see it like that now where it's kind of like so I know a lot of people, and I'm gonna get a lot of slack for this, and that's fine. Bring it on. It's uh, I know a lot of people think tips are justified, like tips. You you know you must always tip. I'm one of those people that actually, like, I, you know, I, I lived off my tips, but I was one of those people that thought that like tips was not mandatory. And I even told that to a lot of my customers, because to me a tip was earned. It was something mm -hmm. that you you earned through through hard work, exactly. Through or through like you know your your the way on how you 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 provided whatever kind of service and that's i, I guess i see it the same way with, with twitch is that it's a service that you provide like a type of entertainment literally and if people feel um comfortable they feel motivated into like supporting you and providing that type of positive reinforcement for that that's that's golden man that's 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 great but um i know there are some streamers and even some people that go like no you must you must support do this 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 and i feel like yeah, the reminders there to, to constantly remind people to like, oh, hey, I, I should do this. I'm feeling this type of obligation that I have to. Mm -hmm. For me, on a moral level, not just in my own beliefs, um, that kind of approach is kind of eh, because I feel that making people feel, not making, influence them to feel obligated to give you money is kind of a bad way to give at it. So again, what I'm saying is if you earn the tip, that's, that's wonderful. And um, if you didn't, that's fine. Yeah. I'd, I'd still treat people the kind of the same way um and yeah i this is i i, I guess my philosophy from delivery came over because i i used to do that i used to be i used to be known as the driver that was super nice and super chill to all my people because i would i would do that thing where i'd go like i i didn't even get requests too but i do that thing where was like 
like um, you'd see a mom like would come home from work and she's exhausted on Friday night. And I'm like, tough day at the office. Yeah. She's like, oh, you wouldn't believe it. I'm like, is it Jenny? She's a total bitch, isn't she? I wouldn't say that, of course, but she'd go like, oh my God, you wouldn't believe. And like, <laughs> well, hopefully peace will make you feel better. And she's like, you know what, man, here's 20. And it's like, wait, really? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, thank you. And then she would call the store and go like that driver, that that's my driver. And so like, that's, yeah, that's how I kind of see it. Like if you can, if you can just be good to people and not just think of them as like just exactly ob objects and stuff like that just i don't know it's, it's how i oh 100 percent correct like um i i try to like reinforce this all the time like if someone comes in and they just like they follow they don't say anything but they just like they follow and they lurk and i'm like look i appreciate the lurks like even if you're not going to chat with me i still want to entertain you either right. through my gameplay through my conversation whatever but if you if i put an environment out that you want to sit in and watch and it makes your day better for whatever reason i'm very happy to continue to do it and if you want to subscribe if you want to donate that is on your own i appreciate it i'm never going to ask for it i'm never going to say like hey you need to do this if you want to chat with me and then um on top of that too whenever we get stuff like i i try to put this out whenever i can but like if we get a hype train mm -hmm. i'm always like oh shit, we got a hype train you know what i'm gonna give out two gifted subs just to push the hype train along nice. and like you know I, I i'm like you guys are helping me out getting me to these places. we're all gonna get emotes you know whatever i want to throw in my own little bit i can throw in you know two gifted subs and it's not it's not gonna affect me too much you know especially since it's basically half off for us because we get the money back right I'm just like, you know, I want to put out the atmosphere of like, if you just hang out with me and like a, ch a hype train hits, there's a good chance that you'll be hit and get a free sub anyways. Absolutely. Um, or even just give you like a VIP badge. Exactly. And, uh, people like that. They appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Um, one of the <laughs> little tangent, one of the things. Uh, um, I, <laughs> my chat likes to mess with me and I love them. So one of the ways that how they like to show affection is that uh, I have those. um there's a there's a plugin that you can use that plays like sound bits and sound files over um over twitch chat or mm. sorry over over twitch game and uh i had uh i had banjos right like dueling banjos that were playing in the background like you know you see the one from like deliverance like dun 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 mm. those guys so um and i'm not trying to brag so it was 10 bits for like uh like this 15 second clip of banjos playing right yeah so for 10 bits, that's like 10 cents, taxes, whatever. Uh, those guys played it 137 times within like an hour. And it was so bad that I developed earworm from it. And earworm, for for those that aren't familiar, is that if you ever get that song or like kind of like a rhythmic thing that's stuck in your head that you just won't go away, that's just, it's, it's the term earworm. Mm -hmm. I developed an earworm of just dun 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 and it sucked because like I would be in my home, I'd be cooking pancakes and I'd go like and I'd just be like Yeah. Like you're angry you're repeating it. Yeah. It it got so bad air quotes bad that I actually had to increase it to like twenty five cents and not to not to like milk it, but it was one of those things where it's all like Oh, dude! If I can give Hank Airworm for a dollar, let's do that. Let's 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 mess with him. And so, like, yep. again, I love my chat. Like I I, I, yeah. I didn't ask for a better community, um, but uh, that's that's just one of the ways on how like they I guess I guess you could say like they reward me of hey you're doing a good job. Here's uh, here's banjos and it's like oh god yeah. So um, I, I have a quick side tangent about earworms. Sure. So uh, I play in a D and D game. Um, it's streamed by one of my other friends. And so I play a bard because bards are my favorite class, hands down. I love bards. Nice. I love everything about bards. Um, I play a bard warlock, and uh, we were we were playing the game, and uh, at one point, two of our uh, two of the players in the party had to go off and do an interrogation, and so our DM was like, "All right, what the rest of you want to do?" You know, so and so goes and like, uh, you know, polishes their sword. So and so goes and like just sits in the corner and reads a book. I'm like, I'm gonna go sit in the corner and start playing a song. And everybody goes, oh, what song are you playing? And I go, oh, because uh, I play, um, my guy's basically from the Middle East, but he has a Russian accent. So I'm oh, playing like a mix between the two. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, so I'm playing, a, I'm playing a song. It's like from my home country. It's very upbeat. And they go, oh yeah? I go, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, like, it's like one of those songs that he plays like constantly, like that you hear constantly in his home country. It like kind of sticks in your head because it's just so like, it got like, it has like that repeat and like the catchiness and like, 
it, it's a very like it's not a long thing but it's just it's constantly on repeat and you hear it over and over again and it just sticks it's very like you know jovial enjoying but like also excited and they go what does it sound like i go it just sounds like you know and everybody's like god damn it for the rest That's of the awesome game though. everybody would just occasionally just go nah, 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 nah. i'm like i got you all that's that see that's clever that's cool actually like i <laughs> i think stuff like that's cool like someone call that trolley i would call yeah. it art no 100 so. <laughs> it was just funny because at, like i was like i just gave breadcrumbs if no one asked me what it sounded like it wouldn't have came up they would just be like oh yeah he's just playing some weird ditty Nope, you asked what it sounds like. I was ready. <laughs> see, what's, what's funny is that I'm pretty sure if those guys ever actually see Tetris, well, I'm sure they will. If they ever see Tetris later on, they'll probably always think of you. And go, like, oh, 100%. Tetris. No, they all knew it was a Tetris theme because I loved, I'm, I'm a huge Tetris guy. Like, I got right? really into Tetris in high school. Like, I was, um, like, I, I saw, like, as we were talking about earlier, fucking YouTube. <laughs> Uh, YouTube was like, hey, you want to watch the Tetris finals? I was like, yes. Tetris finals? <laughs> yeah, like, uh, what is it? Like the NES Tetris finals. And it was like some US dude versus some Japan uh, Japanese dude. And um, I didn't know this was a thing. Oh, yeah. No, if you look at like Tetris, like Grand Prix or Grand Finals, they're really impressive because they're so good at what they do. So I was like, I need to get better at Tetris. And so I picked up Tetris on the Xbox and then I was like consistently eventually beating level like 15. I'd go to 115 consistently and just beat it. I'd get to like level 16, 17, 18, 19. And I was just like, this is where I'm having fun because it, like, it, it was like immediate puzzle solving, which was just like really intriguing to me. Yeah. I've been looking for a new Tetris for a while. I know, uh, I think the PC Tetris actually just dropped, so I might pick that up soon. But, um... Oh, I had no idea. I didn't yeah. Know Tetris was that booming. Dude, it's fantastic. But, like, so it, it's like a joke between some of my friends. Like, my, my close friends who don't play D&D with me. Just, like, I've known them since high school. But, like, I'm known as the Tetris guy. So if I'm like, hey, let's play some Tetris, they're always like, no. We're not going to play Tetris with you. There's no reason to play Tetris with you. Is Tetris a multiplayer game now? I thought it was only. It is now. Oh, oh, so like you would like just there would be like tied panels and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So how multiplayer Tetris typically works is, um, whenever you clear a line, um, it gives um like trash blocks to other players, oh. and so it will fill up like an entire row or a t uh, yeah entire row of it except one brick. So it's like you can easily clear it if you fill that one brick. But if I send like 10 lines to you and you have this long thing of things that you then have to clear really quickly, it gets, you know, very, uh, very stressful. I'm going to take myself. Uh, so, go ahead. Sorry. You heard of that game called Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine? No. Oh, man. I just hated myself. So it's on the Sega <laughs> Genesis. It, was, it came out when I was a kid. Uh, there, it, I guess it was like a, an American version of like this Japanese game called Poyo Poyo, I think what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like Tetris, but except it's like these little blops and things like that. Oh, so, like, the ones that you can like rotate, right? E I don't know. Maybe. No, they're just, I, I don't know. It's, it's been like years, but like there's like these little like bots. And if you make a line or a proper line or whatever, um, no, 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 not a line. If you make a proper like four four in a row. Yeah. It'll like summon like these, like, uh, like this whole line of like these, these blobs that your opponent can't break or something like that. I don't yeah, know. yeah. It's See, I, I've heard of I've heard of Poyo Poyo because there's actually a Tetris Poyo Poyo like crossover game that's like really popular uh -huh. on the Switch. Oh, okay. Have you played it? No, because I hate Poyo Poyo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair. fair I'm enough. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're, I, I have no loyalty to it. I'm like, all right. No, I just know I know a lot of people who play it, and I'm like, I can't. I'm sorry. Nope. <laughs> you know what you should do? You should just say Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bee Machine is way better than Poyo Poyo. Just just, just throw some gas on that fire, man. <laughs> some people like to see the world burn. Yeah, no, I feel I you. Do, so. Yeah, no, it's fair. <laughs> man. I, I'm always mad at myself because I always want to play more Tetris. But like streaming, I'm like, who's going to watch me play Tetris for six hours? Because I could easily play Tetris for six hours. <laughs> Can you can you talk to chat while playing Tetris? Or are you like oh yeah, hundred percent. No, okay. I can. I I at least until like level 15, 16, when like things are like flying down, I can I can chat pretty easily. How do you do that? Like how do you like? I know that sounds like very like a like a caveman kind of question, but like how do you play when it's moving that fast? Like do you just like you just assume you just put them to the left or the right? Like how do you how do you? Uh, do you it, it's one of the things I've learned from watching like Tetris tournaments. It's like um basically 
NES Tetris, um, they set up what are called wells on either a side or in the center, depending on how their play style is. Um, and a well is basically, uh, so you know how typically if people are playing Tetris, they'll like leave the very right column open so they can drop like the long Tetris piece. Yeah. So that's, that's a well. So some people set up on the left side, some people set up on the right side, some people set up in the center. I typically try to set it up in center. I'm not good at it yet because I, I used to do right side, but now I do center. And basically when it gets super fast, you can instead of just trying to like throw it all the way to the side and drop it, you can just rotate drop. Oh. And it makes things a lot easier. And um, constantly because looking at like, cream, right? Exactly. Instead of like oh, moving over six taps, I just have to rotate once and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it, for me, it makes it a lot easier for um, NES Tetris. I know a lot of people do left side because they like the hyper tapping kind of thing. And like hyper tapping is just a, a term they use for like tapping really fast on high level. It's actually oh, insane okay. if you it's watch like, NES Tetris. It's like one of those things where they sound like elitist, but it's like, dude, you're just pressing left. Like, okay, no, gotcha. but like the way they tap is like actually insane. It's it's oh, okay. I, I, like, right. I'm fascinated by it because I, I don't have the speed. So typically middle middle is like if you're medium good. If you can handle the speed and rotate fast enough and set things up consistently, left or right side is like if you're really good or really new. Huh. Okay. But, well. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I'm gonna go, like, I, got, I got some Tetris lore in my mind now. Now I, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna start making wells in the middle. So. Yep, uh, yep. No. What the middle well? Like when I first saw it, I was like, this is genius. But I would have never thought to like you know leave the middle gap. Yeah. Cause it's just not like where like you just inherently go. You're always like left side to right side. It just looks prettier. It's easier. You have this large bl rot, uh, brick of like pieces and the one empty side, whatever. Having two separate bricks just feels wrong, <laughs> but it makes things so much easier. That's crazy, huh? And also like consistently looking at like, what's your next piece? What piece do you have stored? Those things are very important for when you're playing Tetris at faster speeds. I think I'm going to watch some Tetris streams now, actually. I'm not going to I lie. highly, I might send you, I'll, I'll send you the grand champions like that. I got like really into it. Yeah, and you please, can, you can go down that rabbit hole. Yeah, please do. Cause I mean, like if it's something that I could like do while I'm like studying or just busy, I, I just throw it. Just like watch that dude. Hell yeah. Please do. No, it's fantastic. I, I, I fucking love Tetris and I'm so mad that I love Tetris because I'm always like it's such a stupid thing to be good at but here I am <laughs> do you want the rabbit holes uh I guess I'm kind of climbing out now but one of the rabbit holes I was deeply in was this this guy on YouTube his name's um I think his name is Vidya Vatti and he does all like the lore for Dark Souls and Bloodborne and I think he does Sekiro but mm. he goes like these really high production videos of like explaining the lore and whatnot and it's just kind of like I would have never gotten this playing Dark Souls. I mean, I don't spend enough time reading <laughs> like the items and stuff. And he talks about how like, uh, hmm. uh, did you beat Dark Souls 2 yet? Nope. Yet? I'm still going. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's a long game. It's a very long it's game. A, it's a very long game. Uh, where, where are you at real, real quick? Oh shit, what did we just beat? Um, I know we beat the fire dude, like the lava dude. Oh, the old Iron King? Yeah, what else? And then we went underground. We, um, last thing I remember, we beat the, the crypt boss. Um, crypt boss. I don't Bob. No, 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 no. Um, like where, like the guy who's like, Hey, don't you light a torch in this region? Ah, oh, what's his name? I'm so mad. Um, dark souls to crypt boss. Uh, oh god, Velstat, the Royal Aegis. What does it look like? <laughs> god, he was, he was like a dude with a sword, and then like halfway through he gives himself like dark energy. Yeah, the Undead Crypt. Yeah, it, I, I, uh, here, I'll describe the region. Basically, the region was super annoying. There's these bells everywhere. And then if an enemy hits the bell, then you get these really annoying oh, enemies. Yes, yes, yes. That place sucks. Yep, that's the yes. region we just beat. There you go. Okay, okay so, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I'm you, glad um, the bells is what triggered it for you. Because I hated the bells. I freaking... Oh, my God. Because I... 
I, I'm a pretty like dumb Dark Souls player. Like yeah. I was like, if I get my Claymore, like that's the whole game for me. It's like Claymore good, Claymore bonk on head. Like that's how I play. I don't do anything else. Yep. So like I'm this big ass freaking Claymore in the freaking tombs. I just keep hitting these bells, and I don't. I'm not making that connection yet of like this is spawning more enemies. I just know something's spawning more enemies. Yep. And so I'm just so like, oh my god, and I, yeah. So anyway, he he does. He would do videos like that explaining like where these bells would come from by based off looking at the texture and it's like oh well this i'm making this up right now but like oh this was crafted by the blacksmith in in manjula because it has his signa on it and all this kind of stuff Mm -hmm. he would just go on and on so he just i went really deep into the the, like the dark souls lore let let alone like i don't remember the undead crypt but um but yeah it was uh that's i i kind of just got out of that i was doing i was doing the bloodborne one bloodborne i you know what i I'm, i'm gonna i'm gonna make people mad I don't think I was too happy with Bloodborne. I, I don't oh, really? think it was a... Uh, ah, I've, I've heard, hey, Bloodborne's really hit or miss for people. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Because, like, <sighs> I don't know, man. It was just some of those... Like, it, like the art was phenomenal. The monsters were phenomenal. Hmm. Um, I love... I love. I actually, I, I, I love guns. I, guns are awesome. Yeah, of course. kind of person. But, um, I just... I don't know. Something about Bloodborne just didn't... You know what it was? I think it was because I got I mean, stuck at a boss for, like, 15 I'm just hours. saying... I may or may not be a sword guy. Oh, dude, check you out. <laughs> but no, oh, I, that would actually, actually wouldn't make sense this. now I think about it. It wouldn't make sense just having the shield and not the master sword. So yeah, that oh, yeah, of course. Sense. Of course I have the master sword. And then I have a bow and arrow above my door. Oh, I, I, really? I collect. I, I, I was uh, in high school. I really got into collecting weapons. Nice. Because my, di- my dad, he had a machete that had OJ Simpson on the front. And on the back, it was OJ Simpson chasing the girl on the back. And I was always like, that's weird. That's cool. That's... And- <laughs> Where do you where do you get something like that? I don't know where he got it, but he just has it, and it's always above the fridge. And I'm like, that's where the machete is. And so, like in high school, I got into cutting my pocket knives. Safe in your house. I'm just saying. <laughs> but no, so then in high school, I got I started collecting pocket knives. So I have like seven or eight pocket knives around my room, just scattered. And then I was like, you know what? Let me just get a sword, and then it just fucking blew up from there. <laughs> that's pretty cool, though, dude. I I think that's cool. Like. I, if I was ever at your house, yeah, I'd say like, dude, I feel pretty safe right now. Like, I, you know, someone's gonna get. That's what everyone says. The, They're like, yeah. like, if zombie apocalypse happens, we know where we're heading first. Also, I live like <sighs> two minutes from Bass Pro Shop, so I'm like, we know where we're raiding. Oh, dude, I love Bass Pro Shop. There was, I used to live at my old house. I used to have a Bass Pro Shop like down the street from me, mm-hmm. and so uh, I would, I, I would make up excuses of wanting to buy things just to go there, just to like, just to hang out, and yeah. like, I've always wanted like an actual like badass compound rambo bow like i've always just wanted one and so i would just make excuses to myself going like i'm gonna buy some i don't know making something up like fishing bait even though i don't fish just yeah exactly <laughs> they're like so, what uh, river is near you don't worry about it <laughs> it's like I, you, know, you live in socal there's nothing but desert and cities here ah uh, you know there's like a pole in the back you know we got the mountain there's water up yeah. there i think <laughs> <laughs> actually uh <laughs> not to off tangent too much in mount uh, baldy don't worry actually it. mount baldy actually has um if you go up it there's actually the san antonio F- no that's the san antonio falls there's like some kind of like water thing waterfall water thing and you can actually climb up it it's actually really chill there's no fish up there but it's actually be really cool i used to be a very uh adventurous outdoorsman mm. kind of guy so i used to i used to i used to live outdoors not yeah, i would love physically. to be outdoors but i hate bugs it fucks me up you know, if you go in the winter, you don't deal with bugs, dude. That's why, like, that's t- when winter time happens is when I always go on my hikes. It's when I like I'm more willing to camp. It's like that's I'm like, there's no bugs. I'm down. Dude, the first time I went, I went camping up of the S- Azusa River in S- okay. SoCal. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just before I actually had like really good camping gear. Like I used to have just like Walmart stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's like. That it's basic. Heavy. It's, it's basic. basic, right? It's not like REI where you're spending like hundreds of dollars for like a lightweight tent. But um, I was like, the first time I was going, I was going hiking and camping with my buddy, and I was like, oh, I'll just have a sleeping bag and I'll sleep on the floor like a like a like a true like a, like a oh. man. Boy, was that one of the biggest dumbest things I ever did. <laughs> and like, it's a recurring thing with me where it's just like my own arrogance gets in the way because I'm like. Yep. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll yep, be fine. I feel you. Yeah, man, it's fine. I yeah, same. I was uh, we uh, the first time I went camping was by a river, and the first night I was uh, we were about to like you know go to sleep, and someone was like, "Oh, hey, did you get your blanket out of the car?" I was like, and "It was a big like 
bat blanket. I was like, no, I don't need it. We'll be fine. You know, we'll, we'll be fine in the morning. I got in the cave. I had my one blanket. I woke up at like 2 a.m. Like, why is it so cold out here? Oh, dude, have you been so cold where you start hallucinating? It sucks. <laughs> Um, no, that sounds terrible. <laughs> so real quick, back to that Azusa story with the with the sleeping bag. Yeah, the place was covered in with fire ants, just red ants everywhere. Ooh. It's just fire ants, right? And I was like, it was it was so bad because like I took off my boots, I threw on flip flops, and they were biting like because they would get on my toes. So I was like, yep. okay, I got to put back my boots. At seven o'clock sharp, the ants went away, and the spiders came out. Fucking spiders, and like we were kind of by like the stream, right? And there's yeah. nothing but spiders, and it's weird. They did this dancing thing, like these spiders would just do like these squats. Like they, you ever see that video of those crabs on a beach, like then they're all dancing, yeah, like that animated video. The they crab rave, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were doing that except they were spiders, right? And I don't know where the damn came from. My buddy, she had an extra like tent, like a tent thing, but like this bug net thing that she just happened to have on her person that she let me borrow, and so I was like, okay, I'll secure it midnight rolls around after we got done like eating and, and like um making like 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 i think we made s'mores just old, like old school style hmm. um my entire sleeping bag and my entire like bug net was just covered with spiders just just straight up Jesus. like and i it was so bad that i like stood for like till five in the morning till the spiders went away <laughs> just to get like three hours of sleep like it was just yeah oh man yeah, that shit fucks with me. Like, I can't. I. Oh, fuck. I. I've. I think, it, like, bugs are another, like, deep rooted phobia for me. But oh, there are yeah. times, like, I'll just see them. I'm like, there'll be, like, a spider on my wall. I'm just like, fuck, do I do? I don't know what to do. Oh, I just watch it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to touch it, is the thing. I'm, like, my usually go to is, like, let me get some axe body spray and just, like, fuck, kill that <laughs> yeah, shit kill with the lighter and just, like, no, I'm just kidding. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like for real, I just no, no bugs, bugs and the frogs from Dark Souls. They're my two fears. So if I sent you like a like a like a frog statue from Dark Souls, that would be like in the trash like right away, right? Like statue? Just, like, what do you mean statue? I'm pretty sure someone's made something like. Are you talking about like a figurine? Oh yeah, no, I would. That shit would either be in the garbage or it'd be like on the shelf, but turned away from me at all times. Cause I know for a fact I'd wake up one night and just see the eyes and like the reflection of the moonlight and oh, dude, what if panic. It like, what if it glowed? Oh, that'd be. <laughs> Please leave me alone. I, you know, I have a buddy who likes to make things. He actually just made his own lightsaber, like literally okay. from scratch. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm gonna see if he can do this. He God, fuck! I swear to God, <laughs> I'm gonna get a random package in the mail one day. And be like, oh, what's this? I'm just see the frog. Just, and... just like looking at you, right? In the middle of the night at two o'clock in the morning and starts like like chirping. Uh, like, frogs chirp? No. Oh um, no. What fuck did I hate them? <laughs> I also you know, I just don't understand the fear. Cause I'm like, I'm not afraid of frogs. I'm not a fa uh, afraid of like large eyes, but for some reason this fucker it hits my soul deeper than I've ever had before. Is it maybe because that like the stone part like he turns you into stone if no scared. i don't care about oh. that i'm like uh because uh, i played through all of dark Souls one actually never getting cursed nice and so you know people were like you know that's lucky you know curse sucks i'm like i bet and um so like the curse part i'm like whatever the, the like you know i i love uh medusa myths i'm a huge fan of greek mythology so like medusa myths oh, nice. i'm like oh fantastic you know turning people to stone whatever that's cool Something about the frogs, them being on my screen, fucks me up. Okay, real quick. Are yep. there other creepy frogs that might freak you out? Or is it just Dark Souls? Just that one. That's I can so look at it. I can, I can pull up pictures of frogs on my computer and be like, yep, those are frogs. No big deal. That one fucking frog. <laughs> That's fascinating, dude. That's if if you look on my channel too, there's like at least like seven clips of me panicking because of frogs. You will see it's genuine panic. It's not it's like, like oh, I'm so scared. Crazy. It's like genuine like bone hitting panic, and I don't oh. know why. I was like, I need to talk to a psychologist at some point just to like psychoanalyze my problems so I can understand my fear. Dude, but I have no I, fucking that's like clue. What I kind of want to know right now too because it's more of like uh, I don't know if it's like a like like the the building aspect of it but it's like what what what's causing that that's it's like a puzzle you know what i mean so yeah it's like uh, 
Yeah, no, yeah. I, I've had people like send me pictures of frogs like boo and I'm like that's a frog what what's the issue and they're like does it scare you no <laughs> like but Dark Souls <laughs> what <laughs> like even the the fucking uh cuz we I forgot about this boss we just fought the the fucking eye frog boss with like the head oh, that the comes out songs. yeah yeah we just fought that I was like yeah this doesn't this isn't that creepy it's weird really? it's not creepy well, to be fair, I was also creeped out by the like when I learned that the 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 the, the stone frogs actually had like the two little eyes because that's the part that kind of like freaked me out. Maybe yeah. it's like a size thing, like a size proportion thing that's kind of like Who knows? a lie. I don't know. I'm now fascinated. With, I might Google this later. Yeah, why, feel free. If you can figure anything out, of, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> why am I afraid of dark soul frogs? <laughs> why am I afraid of these frogs so much? <laughs> Also, just say no with your future VR therapy. Don't you fucking dare put me in the thing of those fucking frogs. I would murder you. I don't... <sighs> I just start swinging at that point. Right, what, what if... What, well, yeah, but you're in VR, though, so you're just going to swing in the air. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, well, what if, like, I don't know, you had the frogs there, and they had small eyes, and then, like, they gradually, like, would just... Inc- oh, my God, that's fucked up. I think about it. Because, like, the longer you look at it, you would cast, like, I don't know, like, a ray, and it's, like, the longer you stare at it, the eyes would just slowly scale up. Oh, God, I hate God, it. That's- I would that's hate horrible. it. That's horrible. That's the thing, though. I don't know what part of the frog terrifies me. I don't even know if it's the eyes. I just know I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. it's, it's really fucked up. And people make jokes about it all the time. They're like, you're such a baby. I'm like, look, yes. <laughs> it's funny because, like, um, I, the guy at co-op Dark Souls 2 with, I'm like, look, I'm, a, I'm not a good Dark Souls player. I, when I play games, I tend to go faster than I'm supposed to. I go, Dark Souls has like, f- like literally hit the, 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 the brakes on me because of these frogs. I never know when they're going to show up. So if I'm not in a very open environment, I'm going as slow as possible. Just in case there's a frog. Oh, dude, I can't wait to see you play Dark Souls 3 then. <laughs> Fuck. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Look, it might happen. Someone gifted me Dark Souls 2, which is why I'm playing it. And then immediately after, someone gifted me Dark Souls 3. And I'm like, well... All right, dude. It's, it's it's one of the things that like one of my mods was telling me about. Just like you got to be careful. You don't want to get like vacuum, not vacuum, but sucked into that whole Dark Souls. Like, just like you are like the Dark Souls streamer because yeah. it, like once you live that Dark Souls life, you're kind of like, dude, like I'm comfortable. Like I love this. Like I there's so many things you can do with it. Like I can do like a no hit run. I can do all this. I can I can become like <laughs> always mad kind of streamer because like, no, hundred percent. Yeah, but um, it fucks me yeah. up too because I actually don't personally. I don't like Dark Souls. I don't enjoy the game. Dark Souls 1 I finished and people were like, so what'd you think? And I was like, I just didn't enjoy it. I, I can look at Dark Souls as like the beauty that it is. Dark Souls is a very beautifully made game, the, especially Dark Souls 1 and the, the level design. I'm like, it's amazing. The interconnectivity, the way everything kind of just like works with each other. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. I just didn't enjoy it. I don't enjoy the really difficult, like, you know, push for an hour, get killed, have to redo that hour kind of game. Uh, games like Meat Boy, like Super Meat Boy and stuff, where it's like, you know, you die, you restart, die, restart, die, restart. It's like six second loops. I love those games. Cause I'm like, I don't feel like I'm wasting hours because it's like, you know, 10 seconds. Even if I do waste an hour, it doesn't feel like it. Cause I died a hundred times compared to one time in Dark Souls, I lose all my souls. It just wasn't fun to me. Do you have like but, a how, do you have like a count of how many souls you've lost like in one run? Like did you lose up to like ninety thousand souls? Where you at? Oh um, no, I'm uh what's it called? I know for a fact I've lost at least a hundred thousand souls in Dark Souls two because I lost them all in one go and I was pissed. I had a hundred, I had a hundred, I think one hundred and one thousand souls and I died. Um and I was like, all right, it's fine. It's an easy place. I can get them. And then I was uh what's it called? Like raided or whatever. Oh. And I was like, fuck. And the guy was like a dex build versus my because I use double great swords, so I'm very slow. But if I hit you, you're gone. And so I was like, I'd swing, he'd come up, slash, 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 back out. I'm just like, I can't do anything. And I died, I lost 100,000 souls. I was just very angry. Ooh, that's that is rough. That is rough, actually. Yeah, Uh, I am. I would actually like using the whips in Dark Souls, too. Um. I, I, I miss them a little bit. I was like, these are fine, but playing the entire game with a uh, plus 10 greatsword and then like the Black Knight greatsword, I'm just like, no, it doesn't compare to this. I'm going to be honest. 
when I got raided, I would used to do uh, so the demon of the demon of souls, the frog demon. Uh, yeah. He uh, when he dies, you could take his soul and you can have it crafted to become the spotted whip, which is the poison whip, right? Okay. Well, Dark Souls two. If you get a, if you have an item that has a sl uh, that's that's special to Audi has like poison on it, hmm. you can actually double poison it. And so, oh. if in Dark Souls two, not so much Dark Souls three or one, poison is deadly. Like it okay. is not funny. Like do not mess with poison yeah. in Dark Souls two because they will kill you. And so like you ever get raided by someone, you're like, all right, man, I'm just gonna just keep whipping you and uh, boom, you're poisoned. I'm just gonna just dick around over here in this corner and I can do anything about it. And uh, <laughs> but yeah, so. Good to know. I'm gonna go yeah. make that poison whip next time we play. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, man. I, dude, whips are really ineffective, but they're funny to look at. So, hmm. so we got about 14 minutes left. So I'm gonna ask you in these 14 yeah. minutes, the, the the VR therapy stuff. Like, what what what's the mindset behind it? What do you see out of it? What do you see now that can come out of it? Kind of things. So, I guess I should start off with where I kind of started with it. Yeah. Um. So I, when I was getting certified in scuba diving, um, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm no, I love video it. games. When I jumped off of this mountain, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> when I was getting, when I was in scuba diving school, um, yeah. I was in a room full of like twenty people, right? Mm -hmm. And out of those twenty people, seventeen of them couldn't put their head underwater. And it was really weird to me. Interesting. It was, yeah, it was where like, like, you know, we're all in the, we're all in the pool. We're all doing this. And they physically could not put their head underwater. Not with, and they don't have any gear on. You're just in your swimsuit or whatnot. Because yeah. we have to make sure that you know how to swim. They couldn't do that. And so that was really weird to me. Fast forward like a year, no, two years from that point, And I was driving. I was just randomly driving home. And uh, I was driving home from a chemistry final and I was all like, I was, I, cause I always think about that moment. I was go like, well, how do you, how do you enroll into a school and not be able to do it? You know, when you're paying all this money and all this, you know, yeah. all this effort to it, how do you not do it? If only there was a way to show somebody how to go under, like, you know, how to expose them to going underwater without them actually getting wet. Now that doesn't make any sense, but I, I sat there and I was all like, oh, wait a minute. You could do that in video games. Oh, yeah. wait a minute. You can do that in VR. Oh, uh, I guess you could do that with that. And so it kind of, it, it, it took off with that, right? Yeah. So I changed my direction with everything that I was doing. Because originally, I, I, I went back to school for philosophy because I just, I loved philosophy. Philosophy struck, sparked a brand new interest in my life and everything. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, wait a minute. I could just do this with, with VR. But I need a different approach. I need to learn about how the brain works, how the people work, how behaviors yeah. work, why this happens, why this happens. So I was like, okay, cool. So I go and you know I, I enroll in some some university and uh, I do my I'm doing my time and all that kind of stuff. And I start learning like, okay, so how do you bridge this gap? Like, okay, so you have something called exposure therapy, right? Yep. Because a lot of things with phobias and fears, if they're irrational, and for ways to people to do that they need to build confidence with themselves to do that. And the only way you can do that is slowly introduce something yeah. to them so they can build like a callus. Yeah. Same thing with medicine and vaccines. Uh, like with the polio vaccine, for example, like they gave you a very small fraction of the polio virus just to build that defect. Exactly. That. Yeah. It's the same thing with life itself. Mentally, it's the same thing. So I went with that, learning how to do that. So. I invested some money into a, like an a Oculus Quest and I started building with that. So I took my background with working with engines, mainly Unity. Yeah. Um, I did that and I started learning like, okay, well, how do I build environments? How to do 3D, or no, sorry, how to do VR? Because building something in an engine is you know, more or less, it's kind of not easy, not difficult. It's just, it, just it, do it. It, it's just shapes basically. Precisely. But then like, once you start doing things in like the physical world, like how does that work? Translate, how do you yeah. Yeah, how do you portray that? So I started learning how well, how does VR actually work? How does it how do you implement it properly? So I have, I get random hiccups. No, you're all good. Um, so then uh so yeah, so then I started working with that. And then I started learning like, okay, well how do I how do I do this as like a research? And so now unfortunately I have to go I have to do my time learning how research works. Yeah. And by research, I don't mean like, you know, crack open a book as in like, how do you conduct the research? How do you, yeah, like how do you look something up? 
that and how do you perform the act like scientific research yeah, yeah, how yeah. do you actually do that because if you can't i can say a bunch of stuff and i can so like okay this is how this is but if i can't prove it with actual data or science mm-hmm. it's not gonna go very far i mean granted it's cool but if i can't prove it scientifically like actually really with science then it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere with yeah, that. it doesn't so, matter so yeah i i feel you and um i, I think it's super interesting because like uh, I got my uh, I got Oculus Rift um, like nice. four or five months back because I want to start doing VR games for the channel and also just because I was always interested in VR and I didn't realize how how absorbed you get by VR so quickly mm-hmm. and like um, I was playing Super Hot oh, and nice. one of the, one of the moments in Super Hot is um, because Super Hot like the whole premise of the game is like you're kind of being like controlled by like an entity to do what they want kind of thing and so at one point like it's like shoot yourself in the head and like i was like all right sure click later on though you're at the edge of a building and it's like jump and you look you can look down it's a super far i have a huge fear of heights oh nice i've had a fear of heights since i was like two I like it fucks me up like like um you know like two story shopping malls where they have like the railing and you can look down the I'm on I'm always on as far of a side from the railing as I can because I don't like that feeling. That that makes sense though because you'd feel yeah. more comfortable there. Yeah. Yeah. And so like when it was like jump, I was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't I can't walk off this ledge because I was like I I know for a fact if I take a step forward, I'm not falling in real life. But taking that step felt real. Oh, absolutely. And absolutely. so I like eventually what happened was like I like moved my head forward to look. Mm-hmm. The game thought I had stepped forward, oh, so it no. dropped me, and I panicked. Oh no! Obviously, I hit the floor. Like the headset comes off in the game, and you're like, you know, oh yeah, go start the next level. But I had such a like, Anxiety. such a like internal fear about it i was like holy shit i understand i didn't actually fall off a building but it felt it so i when you when you mentioned like exposure therapy through vr i was like it's very interesting Mm -hmm. and it's 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 actually in like insane like how 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 helpful it could be honestly so think of it this way too you can walk downstairs can't you oh yeah but you can't jump down stairs, can you? I uh, like three stairs, but yeah. Okay, okay. Now, if I were to take off three stairs from that staircase, is that can you can you jump down that? Probably. How about how about three more? Probably not. <laughs> okay. So somewhere between three and six is a threshold that we need yeah. to find that we can find where you're comfortable at and we need to do that so you can build the confidence for yourself to do that now granted i mean like i'm not that, that, that's a big that's a, no pun actually pun intended because i'm not a coward that's a big jump in regards to like stairs because like, i'm not a from, coward damn because uh, <laughs> i'm not a little a little bitch who can't <laughs> jump down three stairs <laughs> no, no i meant like as a pun like you know, yeah yeah, like, yeah god i do i love puns <laughs> ultimate way to pull people oh nice. hell yeah 100 agree so there's something there that we can explore to find out where you're comfortable at. Now, yeah. with simulation, we can do whatever the hell we want. I yeah, can... you can scale that up or down super easily as long as you Absolutely. understand how it works. Absolutely. And you can, e- well, you can even create environments that you would feel comfortable in. So, like, for me, um, you can create a world that would just be so appealing that you could hit, like, a, a, a pseudo-zen spot. You ever play a, you ever heard a game called Devil May Cry 5? Yeah. So I've never played it, but my one of my mods, Randy, he <laughs> he played it and he streamed it. And there's a part where you level up and you test your abilities. It's this weird cloud nirvana area where it's like half of the clouds are you're in like you're in like space. <laughs> it's a cloud floor, and you're in like this weird like you can see like galaxies and nebulas. One half of it's all blue, one half of it's all red. And to me, that's always been super cool. <laughs> so I always took that in mind where it's like if I can create the environment where you would be comfortable in and then expose to you or talk to you in things that you can be sealed off from the outside world and just let yeah. yourself speak and let yourself dive in because this is more like psychoanal- psychoanalysis stuff. Yeah, if you can dive in and kind of explore that where you're comfortable and it's like, okay, are you ready? And like, okay, let's do it. Let's take off four steps now. Let's take off five steps. Let's make this frog's eye super huge. You know, let's- we can explore that and we can do it as slow uh, and as, as, as yeah. 
as you, the person that would need to do it. And that's the thing that I think that's super cool. And there's a lot of people that actually that are doing it. Yeah. But unfortunately for psychology, um, well, because psychologists, there's so many different branches of it and mm -hmm. whatever. Um, psychology doesn't really merge too much with like computers and stuff like actually talk yeah. to most people in psychology. They really know <laughs> what's up. Oh, how do you, how do I right click? Um, yeah. So this tech is all foreign to them. They don't know how that stuff works. And um, you talk to like a, a computer engineer and I love my computer engineers and software engineers and I love to talk shit to them, but it's like, hey, do art. What's that? Um, so you can kind of bridge that gap together. You can really try to like yeah. see and connect that bridge for people to uh, to get over. So no, you're right. And because uh, I, I have a friend who's um, she's currently going through not a uh, therapy, but um, she wants to become a psychiatrist. Oh, good for her. Yeah, yeah, so she's so going like the full doctor school. route. Yeah, the yeah. whole like she originally she was like, yeah, I want to become <laughs> exactly. She originally she was like, I want to be a psychologist, and that was her goal. And then she like she got to like the level where she's at with college, and she was like, I'm actually gonna switch to psychiatry because she feels like the psychiatry interest is really fucked up right now with like how meds are just kind of pushed and set up, understood, and distributed accordingly. And so she's like, I want to help fix that. So she's going that whole route. So I. Um, she's been my friend since high school. Like she's one of my best friends. And so she tells, she talks to me all the time about like all the psychiatry, like psychology stuff. So I have a basic understanding of psychology. And then also on top of that, I went to, uh, I was in therapy for about a year. Like when I was telling you, I was like in a really dark place. I went to, yeah. I started working out it, like that whole time I was working through in uh, therapy as well. And it fucked me up because I was like, originally I was like, you know, I don't need therapy. Who needs therapy? You know, therapy is not important. And then you go yeah. and you come out of it better. And you're like, should have done this sooner. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, um, not to not to be all by myself, but I, I you know, I've I've actually uh, I used to see a therapist yeah. for um for a very serious life event that happened to me, yeah. and um there was a point that I started realizing I don't really understand who I am. So you can know who you are, exactly. Air quotes. But do you understand why you're that way? Yeah, you know, exactly. There's certain there's certain things and certain behaviors that we have, like a certain certain uh core personalities and characteristics that we we just have that we don't truly kind of question 100%. and it's something that she was able to guide me in that direction and they're actually it was interesting for me because it came to a point where she's like there's literally nothing i can teach you and it's not so much the tools but it was so much of like being able to question why you enjoy something why yeah, is this exactly good? so it's like yeah. it's it's interesting how like uh, a lot of people have this stigma of like psychology being about like oh you are a bad person so you need to fix yourself when in reality a lot of psychology is like just understand yourself so you can understand everything better oh, absolutely like instead absolutely. of it being like you know you're broken it's okay why do you feel x way and you know is it irrational is it rational if it's rational how can you cope with it if it's irrational how can we overcome it mm-hmm and so I before before I went to therapy for a year, um, I, I was very much against like I was like uh, people would be like, yeah, you should go see a therapist. You know, you have a lot of stuff going on. I'm like, no, I don't need it. I don't need it. I can figure it out myself, you know, kind of things. Yeah. yeah. And then after I went to therapy for a year, I'm like everybody I, I, I see it in people and I'm like, look, I'm going to just say it. You don't have to do it. I just highly suggest it. You should see a therapist. Yeah, they the way they question you and the way like they pose just very like simple things almost mm -hmm. you feel it and it changes how you see things and it's not just like how you see yourself it's how you see the world it's how like it changed how i saw video games even like it's like instead of it being like i really enjoy this game it's like what what provokes joy out of this game right and um and then when you're, you're talking about like just the vr stuff and like bringing that into therapy i think it's really interesting i think it's a really smart concept honestly because i've had i've had like actual like i feel like real experience with them like when i'm playing a, a shooter in vr i feel more of like oh shit i'm getting shot at than when i play like call of duty you know right and like that that guttural experience you feel when playing a game in vr versus how you play or how you just handle life in general it, it using that especially as exposure therapy fantastic idea i think it's amazing so one of the one of the benefits about about therapy and psychology is that uh, or i should say therapist and psychologist yeah. is that um they uh you don't know them 
and you're not supposed to know them oh yeah it depends depends on what type of like you know psychology or therapy <laughs> their practices that they're doing so either more freudian where it's like you don't look at me you're sitting on the couch you're looking away and i'm gonna ask you questions but you're not gonna know me you're not gonna do anything you're yeah. just gonna talk about you the distance or kind you, of thing or you can do a more rogerian uh, carl rogers more rogerian kind of psychology where you're you're doing like where everything you told me i need to speak back to you and so i need to press i need to explain what you just told me better than you so that you understand that I fully understand the concept. So it's more, yep. you know, there's more of a connection. Yep. But the reason why I bring that up is that like, there's a limit of how much you know, like this, this complete stranger, how much that you know about them, because it allows them to see and go around barriers that you put up to protect yourself, to protect your persona, to protect anything you need to do, because there's things that you're not going to tell your parents or your mom, your family, yeah, your, 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 your chat friends in comparison to like the opposite of other people and whatnot. But if you have a stranger there that's has enough like <laughs> enough professionalism, that's like, okay, this is their job, you know. Yeah. It's, it's you know, user confidentiality, like there's you know, you're secured. So let's take that, you take that concept. And uh, you know, <laughs> you're you know, you're a gamer, so you've been on the internet long enough to be like on Discord and have like deep, meaningful conversations with people. Yeah. But it's just over a microphone, right? Yeah, exactly. So take that and take talking to a therapist. And like let's say, uh, you ever play a game called um is it VR? Yeah, VR chat. Uh, I haven't yet, but I've seen a lot of VR chat. Yeah. So essentially, VR chat, you can go to like different worlds. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like um, Second Life. It's VR Second Life. You can mm -hmm. go to different worlds. So what if you're talking to your therapist, but your therapist had to put you like at a beach, or you're talking to them yeah. in like a cozy log cabin, and you're just sitting there. Yeah. Like you can simulate that. So that little extra level of comfort that you can create, that's that to me is the stuff that I find really fascinating that you can just do. And all yeah. that's just like 3D. Just throw that into an engine. Boom. 100%. Done. And it's so. not like, it, like you said, it's com like you can make it as comfortable or uncomfortable as you feel is necessary. Like because uh, exposure therapy is not supposed to be comfortable. It's supposed no, it's to be a little <laughs> uncomfortable. You're not supposed to make it like, you know, you know, if, if you're afraid of the dark, you're not supposed to make it pitch black right away but you're supposed to like slowly lower the lights and it's supposed to like you're supposed to feel that uncomfort but no you can handle it so i i don't i, don't, I want to talk about something called intuition because intuition kind of it's really mm. cool because you start talking about things where like you don't actually physically know you're sorry you don't consciously know that you're aware of something yeah. but you physically actually know and i, yeah. I, I, I don't I, I don't know how much time we have left for that but um, look i have an hour until my next stream we can go over it's fine <laughs> okay so check this out so what you just said was beautiful because you talked about that level of comfort like when you know when you're comfort comfortable and when you're not know when you not know when you're comfortable yeah i forget exactly who 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 uh who deemed this but essentially if you look at if you look at like the word intuition right we can mm. classify intuition of you unconsciously know something from a previous experience well the way and how we would classify that is that like if you've experienced something about 10 times more or less you're gonna have unconscious signals that are gonna tell you hey i'm getting a really strange feeling about this person or i have a very comfortable feeling with this person yeah and we know that you know this unconsciously because we can monitor your body like uh like your body your, your let's say your hair starts standing up or you start developing goosebumps yeah. on your skin like you physically your body's telling you but you consciously don't know that right so in back in regards to the stair steps and what your level is, what you're comfortable with and not comfortable with, we can actually physically monitor you with doing that. We can monitor your brain waves. We can monitor your, 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 your pulse. We can, we can do all that kind of stuff. So that provides so much field of potential because of electronics and technology, all while you're just, you're in that threshold of not knowing between the conscious and unconscious. So, yeah. And like, like you said, it's just, it's interesting. Like, People think their brain or they like they know themselves best, obviously. <laughs> yeah. But there is so much that you don't understand about yourself and that your body understands more than you feel you understand. Like you were saying, like with the goosebumps, like there's times you listen to music and like there's really like a certain lyric and you'll like feel your hair stand up and you're like, huh. Showtime. Yeah. 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 And you're like, that's weird. OK. But like your body knows this. It triggered something in you. And psychology, I, I love that psychology is very much a like, okay, why did it though? Mm -hmm. It's not just that it did it, it's what caused it? Why did it do this? What what happened? How, how can we recreate it? Absolutely. Exactly. And like, it, it's not just uh, how can we create it? It's, is it good to recreate? 
because there's a lot of times you'll get those like you'll get those like feelings and you're like this isn't you don't want this it may feel good for the moment like you're saying how serotonin is like sometimes very dangerous oh dopamine. Not, dopamine sorry yeah how it's, how, it's, how it's dangerous and it's like okay we, we want this but instead of recreating it and just recreating it what if we like control it what if we use it what if we like instead of just making it like you know making yourself feel the dopamine all the time what if we like you know put it to more productive things i i i should probably clarify for context for anyone that's, that's okay. listening yeah uh dopamine's cool it's chill it's chill there's just a balance and it's like if anyone's like tuning in towards the end i should probably clarify that because if someone thinks like oh he hates <laughs> dopamine it's like no 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 yeah it's a little no. more complicated but no you're you're you're, you're absolutely right basically it's basically from my understanding as someone who's like I, I taken like one psychology class. I'm not, that's not my major. It's not where I'm focusing. Eventually I'm planning on taking some psychology class because I do want to develop video games that really like play with psychology. But um, from my understanding, dopamine's very much, uh, you want it, it makes you feel good. But if you have too much, things don't feel good anymore. It's like drugs, you know, once you take a little, the first time you take that drug, you're like, holy shit, this is amazing. Next time you take it, you're like, I need more. I, I'm not I'm not feeling that same as the first time. I need more to feel that first time. You're chasing yeah. that high. And a that's where dopamine exactly. becomes dangerous. Absolutely. Well, a lot of it's just because you're actually not feeling happiness. You're feeling the thrill of it. And that's what exactly. dopamine is doing for you. Mm -hmm. It's not... Um, it's not actually the reward that you're getting you're getting that 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 the enjoyment from it's not the reward of the drug itself it's the thrill of actual well, i shouldn't say the thrill of seeking the drugs but it's it's that rush of feeling getting towards uh euphoria is yeah. what's the addicting part so. uh just just recently a friend of mine showed me this tv show i forget what it's called it just came out on netflix it's like a netflix original and the first episode they showed me they were talking about uh they were talking about drugs and they were explaining it as like an elevator and they go, basically, when you take drugs, it's like you're going into an elevator and you're going up to the top floor the first time you take it. And you get to see all these crazy things. You just see all these people having fun, all of them like dancing, having a party, whatever. And you're like, I want to be a part of that. And then, you know, the drugs start to wear off and the elevator goes back down. And then, like, you know, you you hit the bottom floor again. And then every time you take drugs after that, it's just the top floor is no longer accessible and you need to take you feel like you need to take more to see that top floor again. You didn't get to join in the party. You didn't get to participate in the fun, but you saw it. Right. And you want you want you want to reach it again, but you just can't for whatever reason. And then the other question I was posed was like, OK, but what if when you're coming down, you don't hit the you know, you don't hit your floor again. What if you go four floors deeper? six floors deeper what if like the the elevator breaks and you just keep crashing that's that's the that's the balance you have or the the like downside to drugs like what if you crash and that's the fear a lot of people have when they look at drugs as a as an influential thing and you know some people embrace it some religions even embrace it where they're like you know taking certain hallucinogenics to reach nirvana or whatever mm -hmm. and those are the people who are accepting the uh accepting it and willing to just see the top make that and sacrifice for it exactly and then there's the people who are uh, especially like uh, political politically wise people who are very afraid of drugs and like we don't want everybody to crash because then that's going to just cause chaos for society and then yeah i um i knew a guy once i uh my, my one of my one of my really good friends he uh he invited me over to um he invited me over to his house once just to hang out like he just said hey just come over and chill with me I'm like oh, okay cool yeah we'll have a couple cold ones we'll just chill i get there and um he had this dude there that apparently i knew back in high school i don't remember him but he he knew me in high school and uh he, his brain was fried like just done and it was it was sad because um i should say actually at that point in time his brain got worse but that first meeting that actually mean that i met him he uh his brain was just fried just from acid everything else you can think of and it was it was sad because like we were we were having this conversation we were having this conversation about enlightenment right and at this time i was getting i was still really new into actual like philosophy like well, at least ancient greek philosophy i was very new to that and um i was talking to him about uh, enlightenment like what it, what does it mean for for man to reach enlightenment and he was all like dude it's crazy we're talking about plato and stuff and i'm like yeah dude i love this stuff and he goes it's funny because like normally when i talk to people you need to take a hit of acid to get there 
and <laughs> with your analogy of the elevator i was kind of thinking like the whole time like wouldn't it be better just to take the stairs because then you don't have to fall back down so we were we, we had this conversation between him and i it was long and it was actually quite of it was a sad conversation but it was it was interesting because we were talking about how he was saying in order for me to open my third eye to see the world what it really truly is i need to take this hit of acid with him and i said i don't want to hit that because i don't want to use a tool to give me to, to 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 get me to that level to get me to that stage i'd rather earn it through education meditation and through my own personal success to understand and fully con conceptualize with things sure granted i'm not going to learn everything and it's physically impossible for me to do that and i'm realizing the more i learn the more things i don't know which is very socratic <laughs> but um i was learning that uh like we're talking to him he kept urging me to take the drug not not because he wanted to like because not because he wanted not that he wanted me to get to uncomfortable oh i can't hear you for some strange reason <laughs> hey, there we go there go. hello there go. yeah my mic i uh but like it, yeah, it's not like a you know hey take this with me have fun party kind of thing it's a hey i want you to experience the kind of thing it was a tool. It was a tool yeah. to understand things that I could not, couldn't comprehend. But the thing was that like, as we were talking, the more I was talking, the more I was like, he was understanding that I knew that there were elements that you could do and learn yeah. through hard work to get to that same level. Hmm. And he didn't like that because for him, he'd rather take the quick, the quick, the, easy way. The quicker route, yeah. You ever, uh, you ever see uh, Dragon Ball GT? No, I was in okay. Dragon Ball person, but yeah. Oh, uh, no worries, no worries. So essentially, uh, instead of earning his way to Super Saiyan 4, he used a tool to get him there that just mm. warped him there. So not like he cheated, but it was like more the quick and easy way to get there. Yeah. And it was something that him and I both discussed about. Like, well, well we both had different like, opinions what, what enlightenment was, which mine was more like content, satisfaction, victory, growth, and um, I guess just content. His was just happy euphoric feeling of knowing everything and being secure yeah and it was interesting because in a way there's a lot of you can kind of like okay well this means this this is that this is that but for him it was just like i would need, i need the quick fix because this was my tool that's mm -hmm. right he kept calling it tech this is tech you need tech in your life which tech was short for technology yeah and what he was taking was man-made so it's clean it's pure and it's tech it's not it's acid yeah. uh you know so it, I, I it's it. Like and and like, I I've been learning recently. Like it, it's it's very easy to like fault someone for taking drugs. You're like you know you're taking drugs, chasing a high, whatever. There is a level, honestly. There is a level of you know whether it's marijuana, acid, whatever. Sure. There is a less it uh, um a, a level of it that is supposed to or is innately just there to help. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. But every single drug, no matter what it is, there is a point that people chase. And once you start chasing, it's no longer there to help. It is there to hinder. Mm -hmm. Because instead of focusing on like that first experience where you like you learn a lot about yourself during that first trip, you're like, you know, these are the things that I'm seeing. I'm understanding. And instead of taking that and being like, let me further understand it sober and in a, in a clear mind, you go, I want to see it again. That's right. where it gets wrong. It was just it was interesting to me because like from from the perspective i was with that conversation with that individual it was um because he was always high he had to be high he could not he could not go yeah. outside not high because he didn't have his third eye open he was yeah. afraid of the world he couldn't see for what it was and his was like snake people lizard people all those really <laughs> kind of like hey uh <laughs> just, the, the earth is on another continent and we're down here up here and they're down here and yeah, there's lions yeah, yeah. that are people and <laughs> Yeah, it was one of those kind of things where you're like, okay, but I still respected him. I still respected the conversation yeah. to an extent. And so it was one of the things where it's all like, yours was not permanence and mine was to an extent because you're looking for that quick fix just to function where mine was more of like the method of, uh, mine was more of the method of like, it's earned. And it's not to just, just, just like to talk ill to anyone that does yeah. any kind of drug. Like it's not, it's not supposed to be like that, but it was more or less of like having to earn what was yeah. like enlightenment. So. I, I find it really interesting too that like and this is something I've learned through years and also one of the reasons I really wanted to start this podcast is because talking to people even if like you don't agree with what they say talking you learn a lot from just talking to people 
and getting other perspectives and as long as you're willing to like keep your mind open about what they're saying you can learn something out of it like if, i'm gonna be honest i agree with like 90 percent, 95 percent of what you said this conversation there's very little i've been like you're wrong it's like you know <laughs> the only thing i didn't remember like being like you're wrong is like dark souls is like a a, a fun time and i'm like you're wrong it's not fun but like I no matter dark souls is not fun you're right <laughs> <laughs> all right 100 we agree entertaining yeah it's not fun. exactly so. So, like, just, like, what you're saying is, like, even if I didn't agree with you, say, like, I didn't agree with how you were talking about, like, oh, this person who needed to be high at Tom, they were, like, using the drug, whatever. It, it's a lot easier. It's better for me to be, like, okay, you don't think this is right. Why don't you think this is right? What are you getting out of thinking this is not right? What are, what are your techniques to try to hit the same thing that they're hitting, but differently? And you can like mix all these things together and kind of just create more of a balance in your own life of like because i i personally i don't i don't do drugs i i drink i can't do weed because it fucks my asthma really bad also it's just not fun for me but um i have a lot of friends who like smoke and yeah. all my friends who smoke i'm like you know you do it you have fun you do your thing i'm not going to but there are times like we've had conversations like after a conversation with a friend who was like super high at the time and they're talking about all this like crazy philosophy stuff and i'm just like all right let me listen and it sucks because people don't typically want to listen they want to talk they want to be the one speaking yes. they want to be the one who wants to be right and like in control of conversation but taking time to listen to someone who you know for a fact is not correct right now is interesting it teaches there's you a lot there's something that i'd usually do hmm. and it's usually when i when i when i'm talking to someone for the first time and learning like i know this is a podcast you're interviewing me so it's a little different yeah but if i'm just having a mutual conversation with somebody i'll do these little tr not tricks but i'll use these tools that i'll usually do to try to kind of determine what kind of conversation that we're having and um depends on their personality type and you know the big hmm. five and whatnot if someone's trying to tell me something and educate me something that they're passionate about cool if someone's trying to correct me or educate me on something that I'm wrong, fine, cool. Yeah. But it's the way how they're doing it, their intent of how they're doing it, and mm. their language, their body language, and how and why they're doing it. So what I mean by that is, if someone's going, if I go like, oh well, I think this is a pretty cool band, and they'll go, ah, uh, okay, here's a hint, here's an example. I just randomly got in this weird Ozzy Osbourne kick. I just been just <laughs> jam jamming to Ozzy lately. I don't know what it is. Like, but anyway, I'll be listening to Ozzy, and like someone will go, this is a made up scenario, but they'll go like, oh, Ozzy sucks. And yeah. I go, oh, really? Interesting. Why do you say that? And they'll go for five minutes straight talking about Ozzy, just like why he's horrible. He's bad. He did this. 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 Yeah. And I won't say anything. Like, I'll just sit there, Stonewall Jackson, just listening to them. Exactly. And I'll wait to see what their response is. Because when we normally talk, we'll go like, we'll kind of have these pauses for body cues to kick in. Like, if I'll nod or I'll say, mm hmm, or I'll say, oh, yeah. Or I give you some kind of feedback back to you. So it mm -hmm. falls back to your court to understand that. I'm listening or I'm giving you my attention. Yeah. So I'll normally stay quiet. I'll just I'll just be quiet and I'll see what they'll do. And I've noticed that, and it's kind of fucked up, but people will get really uncomfortable because they'll go, they'll start losing confidence towards the end of their sentences because they just kind of reflect back and go like, he hasn't said anything. And it's not to be disrespectful to them, but it's to see that like, have they realized that they haven't said anything yet for me to real, to, for them to understand that I'm, I'm still there. Like what are what is their purpose in telling me something and i know it, that sounds really mean but no no me, you're right it tells me that this person is more interested in learning or wanting to hear them speak or hammer me down exactly. why i'm wrong instead of having a deep and meaningful conversation back and forth exactly so, it's yeah. very much like they they um uh, they're they like if i go hey you're wrong i want you to go no i'm not i'm right so i can continue to fight Oh yeah, you want me to fight with you, but I yeah, won't exactly. give you that satisfaction. Exactly. As soon as the, as soon as you go, okay, why? And you sit back and just listen. I have nothing to go off of. I like it. Obviously, I've I um again one of the reasons I started this podcast because I like learning about things. I like finding people's perspectives. And so, let's say for example, like I didn't agree with your VR thing. I could very easily be like, no, VR therapy is dumb. That would never work. And you'd be like, why? Okay, and, Dad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd be, you'd be like, "Why?" I'd go, "Well, because yada 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 yada." And eventually, I'm just gonna, like, I'm I'm talking out my ass. I don't really know. I just want to be disagreeable. Oh yeah. And, and if you just listen, you know that I just want to be disagreeable. 
and eventually I'm going to know it and then I'm going to just stop fighting because there's no point. Unfortunately, not everyone, I think, realizes that and we'll just keep fighting until they're out of breath. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, uh, yeah, you're no, absolutely right. No, 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 yeah, you're true. And it, it's funny, too, because, like, the people who do realize it can usually lead to a more meaningful conversation. Because once they okay. realize, like, oh, I'm talking on my ass, then it's your turn to talk. And you're like, well, these are the reasons why it works. And obviously, you being someone who understands what you're going into, you get to talk about it. Same way people who come at me like video games are bad. And I'm like, well, why? And they're like, well, because, like, you know, you're wasting all your time on it. You're doing this. You're doing that. And I'm like, all right, let me tell you why now. Why I, why I play. Like, you know, I play Minecraft because it's a very good uh, creative outlet. You are building things. You are working on construction and all this. Yeah, yeah you know, blocks aren't going to fall if they're not supported. But you have a sense of wanting to build that support and build things that look like they may work. And it's just, it, it's a good time to waste time. And, like, you know, um, I explain, like... Uh, the reason I play or I, I stream games is because people it's less of like, you know, oh, someone wants to watch a video game for however many hours and more of like people want to come and chat with me and talk with me and just have conversations with the community. And the reason they pay or, you know, put forward this is because I'm trying to provide something back. I have emotes that I worked very hard that they respect that I put effort into and they want it. And to, you know, kind of just like show like appreciation. And my parents, they, they my parents are hilarious because they, they question it all the time. They go like, why are you streaming? Like I told so-and-so that you stream, but I didn't know really like, why you stream. You're like, you know, I was like super weird. That I had to go like, oh yeah, people play, pay him to play video games online. And I'm like, that's not the point. It's like, I mean, I guess if that's a description. Maybe, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, and, and my, my argument always is like, look, you watch reality TV, you watch like my 500 pound life, you know, you know, people who are doing whatever, you know, someone who had a kid at 17, you're watching their life experience and you're, you're paying for the TV to watch it. Why doesn't that work for games where you could actually talk to that person who had a kid at 17 and know and understand them better have a conversation with them and like it's just an added layer that you're not getting from tv that i'm providing online usually with the person it kind of because it kind of depends on also who i'm talking to mm -hmm. so what i'll usually do is i actually i'll agree with them what they're, what they're saying that video games were for context if they were to say video games are a complete waste of time i'd go like i can see that in some type of perspective if you want to look at it through this type of lens sure absolutely i could be mm -hmm. a lot more being more productive with my time absolutely yeah i totally get that but what I usually go at that with is, but can you also see it from this type of perspective? Exactly. Are you able to expand, like, think differently for a moment and mm -hmm. just look through this type of lens instead of this one? And can you see the joy from it, the, the feedback of this and this and this? Yeah. Can you see where I'm coming from, from my perspective? Because if I show you a picture and, and I look at that picture, we're going to both see it differently in a way. Exactly. That's how perspective works you can usually dictate a person's ability to kind of grasp things or how open-mindedness or closed-mindedness because sometimes too much open-mindedness is bad sometimes too much -mindedness is good this is how you fall into cults be too open-minded yep. and being a stubborn asshole by being too closed-minded which exactly call me a closed ass a closed-minded asshole um but <laughs> that's the thing is like if, if you can bridge that gap with them and meet them halfway and go like well this is how i see this this is why this yeah. is enjoyable for me it allows you to work better with that person, that conversation. And exactly. if they're able to go like, okay, maybe you're right. Or they shut you down and come like, okay, so you have this personality. You're, you're the, you have this trait, this trait, this trait. I know what bridge is not to cross with you anymore because this is not going to be fun conversation. Exactly. Let's move on. So yeah, it's definitely a, it's a, it's a balance between like what people believe as fact and what people believe as opinion. Because oh, if, if you're arguing or if like you're having conversation with someone and they're like, this is a fact, they're obviously not going to let up. Even if you personally think of it as an opinion, you know, like whether games are good or not. It's honestly, at the end of the day, it's an opinion. There's factual evidence that they're good. There's factual evidence that they're bad. But whether you believe that video games are good or bad, it's an opinion. Absolutely. And if you're going into a conversation with someone with your mindset as a fact, you're never going to budge. You're not going to listen. You're not going to understand. If you go in with thinking as your thing as an opinion, you can do all those things your opinion may be swayed. Even if you are strongly in the camp of video games are good and someone's like, these are the reasons I think video games are bad, you can understand that. And if, if at the end of the day, you agree with them in ways and you're really like devoted about it, you can make video games better because of it. 
Absolutely, you learn about what to improve on for that type of exactly uh, say d like faultiness or downfall or mm. inefficiency. Oh, absolutely, you're absolutely right with that. And so I I feel like a lot of things, and uh, again, none of this is how I thought in high school. Obviously, <laughs> oh, yeah. high school I was like I understand everything I'm talking about, but like a as you grow, you know that opinion or going everything you think basically is an opinion unless it's like you know what's the ratio for gravity you know that's a fact that's been scientifically proven whatever but going in a lot of conversations that like you feel strongly about going in knowing that your opinion whether it's strong weak whatever lets you listen to the person better absolutely i just i feel that not to tangent too much i feel like as like a like a social thing dude we're um, an hour and a half over you can tangent all you want are you serious oh, oh sorry God. half an hour over my bad <laughs> I, I feel, and I'll, I'll be very careful with my word choice, I feel like also socially because because people are able to absorb and produce opinions within their own environment that is accepted, which is, yeah. which is fine. I'm being very neutral in general with my words. Yeah. Um, you can get some kind of uh, vitality from that because if these people will support your opinion, let's say like uh, gravity is, uh, gravity is fake, right? Let's just go with yeah. that. It's, yeah. So gravity is fake, right? And you're surrounded by this environment that says that encourages the idea that gravity is fake, and that's that's totally cool and acceptable and not. Hmm. And so even if you were to cross the bridge to talk to someone that, um, let's say gravity is real, and they'll go, "Well, no," and it's like, "Well, I have all this to prove it. I have all of this acceptance over here to to reinforce exactly my opinion. And if we look for something, I'm gonna have a type of confirmation bias to reinforce what I think. And it's so it's kind of like. I, I I really agree with the concept of like yeah a lot of things we believe in are just opinions I mean there are facts 100%. of course obviously yeah but yeah and it's exactly like you said um and I feel like we're in an atmosphere right now that's like very much that exact thing I was talking to someone just recently about um a kid um because my friend she teaches um or she like does a kind of like an after school kind of daycare thing oh, nice. where um she helps facilitate the online learning that kids are going through right now and all that stuff. And she was telling me about she had a like a 12 year or 13 year old kid who was talking about how colleges right now don't ex or um, white people are being discriminated discriminated because they're white in college and because uh you know they're gonna be they're most colleges like for mexicans blacks whatever you know um uh all the all the um all the non-primary races in america and um he was saying how he has to learn spanish now so he can pass off as a mexican all this stuff and she was like it just like i was so angry about it and i go no you like you have a reason to be upset obviously because she's mexican she's worked her whole life to like make it into schools all this stuff and i go he just doesn't understand what he's saying and i go what you should do if you really want him to understand differently is have him write a paper write him write, write a research paper about why this is it you know two page paper whatever about it and i go the doubt the only thing is make sure he's researching correctly because it's very easy currently to be like why are white people discriminated against in college on google right. google will give you like a hundred different things about why it's happening versus if you google you know what is the balance between them what is happening the googling a broader picture instead of specifics because google will give you what you want well, and yeah, fuel it, your fire it has algorithms to like look for like what is search for your hit like what is related to your search history like exactly it'll, it'll show you what you, there is that level of confirmation bias and whatnot but um yeah that shit don't fly in universities <laughs> no 100 percent. that's why i was like because obviously uh because i was saying like he 12 13 year olds not gonna know how to research correctly Right. There, there's no way. And she's like, yeah, no, he knows how to research. He Google stuff all the time. I'm like, that's not the same. Researching isn't just Googling. Googling tells you what you want to hear. Researching is finding what you don't. Absolutely. And, and so I was very much like, it, it's, um, it's a problem now that you can have an opinion. No matter what the opinion is, no matter how wrong it is, you can have an opinion and have hundreds of thousands of people agree with you and find hundreds of thousands of resources that agree with you but they're not justified mm -hmm. you have to look for the opposite if you're gonna google you know what's happening with white people in colleges why are the white people being accepted less don't look for you know that it's happening look for what is it, is it, what is the ratio like what is exactly like, what 
actually look at yeah. ratios look at why it's happening if it is happening look at the opposite why are black people being accepted in like if you google why are black people being accepted less in in the colleges you're gonna get a lot of research too about african-american people who are not getting accepted into colleges mm -hmm. and it's going to show you oh it's not just white people it's black people it's mexicans it's asians it's all this stuff and it's 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 very much a different mindset that you had to have going into understanding anything oh, absolutely absolutely um it's kind of funny to kind of like uh, go back what you're saying and then take what you just said it's it's just a way of thinking that you kind of have to like adapt and learn. So exactly. yeah, he's, talking, he's kids 13, dude. When I was 13, I, I what was I thinking? <laughs> I was Stupid like, stuff. I was like, yeah. Halo's cool. <laughs> yeah, I did think Halo was cool. I loved Halo. <laughs> but um, you know, I actually wasn't until like, you know, like my mid twenties. And so I started thinking actually like later mid twenties. And so I started thinking like, Hey, this is a, uh, I think wrong. I think more emotionally. I think exactly. more of this. I think of what is like, whatever it is the lowest bearing fruit that gives me the strongest emotion is what i'm gonna jump for what i'm gonna strive for do i still Best. do that hell yeah i still do that sometimes yeah. but i have um i do now have safety mechanisms that help me kind of go back to like well is this how i want to look at this let's exactly. go back and let's, you know try to try to look at a different angle and that does take time like that is a legitimate skill and hell i even the academics i still encounter closed-minded dumb people all the time all the time <laughs> all the time and even though that they have logic and science to back it up i'm not saying like i'm very very much into science but they're using a type of science that'll go like well this is what this supports this and it's like well you should know this from research that you can't just say a study validates an entire uh, an entire way of thinking like you have yeah. to do more 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 what was the sample size what exactly was, what you know it, so it's so and like it's so comp not complicated it is complicated there's so much effort that goes into actually doing research mm. that you have to take it seriously. So exactly. it's just like, it, you know, it's like, having... it's like that there was, there was a time period where everyone was like two plus two doesn't equal four. And it'd be this long ass math algorithm to show that two plus two equals like five or whatever. And like, <laughs> and, and like, you know, halfway through it, there'd just be a small math mistake. But unless you understood how mathematics work, you wouldn't catch it. Right. And so people would think two plus two does equal five. And they like when they have the argument, they're like, no, 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 no. Look at look at look at all this stuff. Look at all this information. And it's very much like even if there isn't a mistake, there's stuff to back what you're saying. Absolutely. I mean, we live in a freaking like I, I know like things are different right now, but like we live in a <laughs> such an advanced and like prosperous environment. Yeah. Dude, you have the, all like the source of information, in your freaking phone, dude. Literally. You go back. What is it? 2021. Go back 11 years ago, and not everyone had a smartphone. This is Hell, true, 2010, go yeah. Back, yeah, go, uh, yeah, oh, oh, shit, 12 years, let's go 20, 2009. Um, sorry. I, <laughs> That's I, all I good. Some, some of, strange, strange reason, I've somehow unconsciously think like 2021. 2020 just, has just continued in 2021, it it's okay. At this point. That's what it feels like. It's like, oh yeah, it's, Feb it's February, uh, it still feels like we're in 2020. It's 2020, 2020.2. Um, 2020. So like... Yeah, pretty much, right? You you look at it and you go like, okay, back in the day, I didn't have a smartphone. Mm -hmm. Okay, even if you did have a smartphone, we didn't have like Google uh, uh, Google Maps or exactly. whatever, whatever. So yeah. like, you look at that and you go like, we have such great potential to do all these great things that for you as the individual to learn, you know, do that, use that, utilize that, um, capitalize out even, and. Uh, <laughs> you can do really cool stuff you can kind of get over a lot of hurdles dude there's yeah. so many things that i've learned that i if i would have lived probably back in let's say the 80s and 90s where technology and the internet never took off like it did mm -hmm. i would have been an even more closed-minded asshole exactly. than i am than i am today so i i, um, I agree and it, it's i actually have people in my life uh who it still trips me up because like we'll have a conversation they'll say something i will yeah. disagree because like i know whatever and uh, then we'll go back and forth for like, you know, a couple minutes. And I'll go here one real quick. I'm going to Google it real quick. And they'll they they get mad at me for wanting to Google it. And they're like, why do you got to Google everything? You know, why you got to look up everything? Why can't you just like talk about it? And I'm like, because if I'm right or wrong, I want to know if I'm right or wrong. Right, right. It's not the fact that I'm like, ha, ha, ha. I'm right. Google says I'm right. It's like if I look it up and I'm wrong, I will go. All right, cool. You're right. It's kind of like the validation of like what what is truth. Exactly. 
what is Socratic? What is what is meaningful? What is truthful? Exactly. Yeah, I I and it, you, and it's it, it trips me up because like I, I'm like we're in a world where technology is so advanced. We have computers in our pockets, literally always. I don't know anybody in my, like my friend group who doesn't carry their phone literally all the time. Right. And I'm like, why not use it? If we're having an actual academical debate, why is it wrong for me to look for proof for or against my argument? And I, I, I've never fully understood why they're so against it, but I feel like the, the main reason is because just they're stuck in a way of like opinion and like what they're saying and their reason. They, they feel invalidated when I Google, basically. And I'm like, that's... You good? I was going to say, I think, because you kind of gave me a springboard idea. I think also it could be is also like the level of and, and that's not just disrespect this is just more of a philosophical thing yeah i think it could also be in regards of the level of how comfortable and comp and competent that the opposing person is providing the information like how much exactly. do they know exactly do they, need, do they need air quotes a backup to validate their their reason i think that also could be another reason why it might be like a conflict you would be having mm -hmm. in, a, in a conversation is because like well, why don't you know your stuff like why do i have to wait now and have this like loading time of you trying to get retrieve more information yeah. or to validate what you're saying you know i i think that also might play a part of that and i'm not to, not to dismiss what you're saying or whatnot it's just i think this also might be another reason why they might be feeling that because yeah. i'm still not coming from like a psych background it's like well why are they feeling that and so yeah kinda, no 100 i'm doing like an armchair kind of thing where i'm just like hmm no, oh, I, 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 I I appreciate your opinion, like on it, honestly, and like I think you're probably like uh, you're pretty on board, like on the level with it, because it, it does make sense. And I feel like um, because a lot of time when I've had that same friend who will be in an argument and it's something they know very well, mm -hmm. like there are obviously things I know better than my friends, and there are things my friends know better than me. It's just how things happen. Obviously, I'm gonna spend more time researching certain things over others, and they'll be like. Huh, you know what? No, you're wrong. I'll Google it real quick and like make it a thing of like, you know, putting it in my face that they're going to Google it. And I'll go, go for it. I'll sit and wait. Oh, yeah, I'll Google your Google. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. And it's, it's yeah. like, it, it, it's funny because they almost like use it as a slap in the face. And I'm like, I don't, I don't see trying to understand things better to have a conversation as a slap in the face. I see it as a, you just want to, you want to be able to provide information that's factual and understanding. Yeah, because I'm kind of thinking back to what we were talking about earlier about, um, is this person just trying to hear themselves speak so they can disprove exactly. you? Or are they mm -hmm. actually trying to pursue truth? Exactly. Uh, I don't know. I kind of find that, is my opinion, is that when people pursue truth, they're more humble by it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're more relaxed by it. It's not like... Um, I'm not gonna scream in your. I mean, it depends on the 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 the, the severity of the conversation or yeah, if of course, getting high because you know I've been I've been in heated debates before where it's like, oh, you're wrong. <laughs> so, exactly. Um, and there's a point also where it's no longer like you know you're seeking truth and like someone's physically offending you by saying you're wrong. See, but that's also where I draw that line where like if I'm starting yeah. getting insulted, I'll maybe I'll let the first one slide, the second one slide. But if I'm starting straight up being exactly, insulted, like, if if you feel afraid, that like I'm being like, I'm attacked gonna, here. Yeah, because it's like I'm kind of going back to where it's like it's more on the streets where we're like, okay, are we going to throw words? Are we throwing hands? What are you doing? Like, you're gonna, <laughs> exactly. If you're going to insult me, then we're going to do this dirty. And this is the civ <laughs> logic and civility has gone right out the window. And mm. it's kind of like, all right, let's let's do this. So, no, 100 yeah. percent correct. And I think that it just it, I don't I don't want to say it's like how things are being like raised because we're just coming out of an environment of like lower technology and lower like trying to understand but like it's that we didn't have all this technology in the past and some people still don't know how to use it and accept it and so taking the time to understand people as well as understand there's ways to learn and understand more efficiently it just takes time there's it's Absolutely. It's gonna be it's gonna be many many more years before people accept like hey i can just look up what we're saying and we don't have to argue you know it, it's less of a hey i'm right you're wrong and more of a why waste the time arguing when we can just move forward and have an understanding of like hey you were right i was wrong my bad let's go right absolutely and absolutely. people are still very much in the mindset of like i want to be right i want to fight this because i am right instead of being in the mindset of what is actually correct absolutely like uh what is 
<laughs> what is it that you desire? Uh, mm -hmm. The fact that maybe that you could potentially be wrong or the fact that maybe um, the value of the conversation with the individual is not worth your time and effort just to, sorry, a neighbor. Um, <laughs> it's all good. Um, what is uh, what is what is meaningful with the conversation to maybe reflect and learn if you're potentially wrong or the fact that if the conversation is not is it is it worth having a fight over it like hey. um did 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 han shoot first i don't know man i don't care I guess. Uh, yeah exactly you know, um if you want to google it that's fine dude go for it i don't uh, hey whoopee yeah you did so um but yeah hey 100 percent well, I think, you know, 40 minutes over is a good a good <laughs> calling point for this. So, oh, um, I appreciate having me on, dude. This was Yeah, um, that was fantastic. I haven't done a podcast in years, so dude, I appreciate it. I'll, I'll get you back on eventually. We'll we'll I got a few like lined up, but uh I'll, I'll probably be hitting you up to see if you want to come back on and talk more about the especially the view, uh, VR therapist stuff cuz it's super intriguing. If I can if I can give you some uh some feedback real quick. Yeah. Keep doing the good work. Keep doing it, man. <laughs> I appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm trying. Fight for it. You, 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 yeah, I can see it. You fought for this. Keep doing it, man. This is a yeah. uh, you do good work. So I really appreciate it. Um, My so pleasure. we will we'll be ending out here. But before we do, I got one more question to ask you. Uh, oh. would you like to shout anything out <laughs> before we end? Because I asked Anthony without giving him a heads up, and he was like, "Fuck, I'm not ready for this." <laughs> so I'll give it to you too. So we're gonna go like do the dishes. Um. I would say is uh, it's very philosophical corny but i would go as pursue things that are meaningful for someone pursue sorry for yourself mm -hmm. find what you value and understand why you value it all right understand why friendships and relationships matter to you and why those particular ones are special to you sometimes it's more important to understand and be reasonable with things than so much to just shut it down and not give it an opportunity to grow or bloom that's that's what i would that's what I leave it with. Sounds so. good. Well, thank you very much for coming in and spending all this time. I'm sorry I held you for an extra almost hour. <laughs> I don't know what time it is right now. <laughs> Dude, it was it was I've a lot of fun. The, I've been chewing the same ice cube for like the last like, <laughs> like hour or two. Like, I ran a water like an hour ago, so I'm like, I'm just chilling. Dude, it it honestly, the same thing happened with me and you that happened with me and Anthony. Like I looked 15 minutes in and I was like, fuck what are we going to do for the next hour and 45 minutes? And I look back, I'm like, oh shit, it's time to end. It's fine. <laughs> but um, honestly, thank you, thank you, thank you for so much for being willing to come on. I know you didn't know me. I didn't really know you. And you were like, let's do it. And let's I appreciate it, yeah. it. My pleasure, man. All right. So anyways, thank you all for watching and listening for the past two hours, 45 minutes, the dab to end it. <laughs> Um, we'll be back in two weeks with another one of these episodes and, uh, thank you again, Hank, for showing up Damn. and, uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks so much. Damn, good show. <laughs> Peace.